a quick recap since we spent more time on audio than I expected. What did you all take away from the first session and how do you feel about this? Um, I took away that uh, I have a lot to learn, both about the mechanics of the game and also uh, the social aspect in terms of, you know, role playing a character, but not um, constantly testing the patience of those around me. And uh, I, you know, I learned I learned a lot about that. I'm very grateful to have a very patient dungeon master and uh, and um, and uh, and colleagues here playing the game. And the other thing that I really enjoy, I learned, is that I actually really enjoy playing this. I think it's really fun, especially kind of the storytelling aspect. So I'm keen to keen to uh, get get right back into it. Yay, um, Shannon, Brian, and Adam. Shannon, go ahead. Uh, I have uh, enjoyed learning the the ropes and and how to play, and also you know learning from everybody else, and you know what kind of feels good and what works and what doesn't. And um, I'm just excited to keep learning. Yeah, I had a really I had a really good time. I kind of like the way that we that things started developing, um, even even if they had kind of an interesting an interesting cliffhanger. But it's it's fun. It's gotten me kind of back into the social aspect of this and and really just becoming comfortable enough with the system and and the world and, and doing this. So yeah, I've enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I uh, enjoyed uh, first off uh, being able to berate Gary, but also I enjoyed <laughs> learning that maybe berating Gary all the time isn't necessarily the best option. And uh, there are uh, a variety of kind of safety and uh, uh, caring options for uh, players while you play D and D, which I, I guess I hadn't really thought about, which is really interesting to me. No, that's that's true. That was another thing I learned is that always, you know, kind of taking into account the feelings and the emotional state of the other players at the table. And one of the reasons why we had this glow up on this most recent stream with the Zoom windows is not just so the audience at home can see us, but also that was so that we can see each other, and it'll be easier to kind of read you know how people are reacting to what's happening as we play cool um so before we get started uh gary do you a do you feel comfortable and b do you want to talk about some kind of post-game chat that we had about um about your character and kind of how we got started and and things that will change as we go forward yeah, I mean, I look. I got car very carried away with my character, and some people were amused by uh, my by the depths of the of the of Merengue's uh, uh, misanthropic nature, and uh, some people were less amused. And um, look, I I am used to having my own show on Animal Talking, where I'm the host, and the whole thing kind of centers around me. Um, this is not that. This is where I, you know, I'm much more part of a group, and I think that's a, a gear shift that I. Um, was slow to to kind of adopt as I as I moved into uh, dungeon crossing and um, uh, I really like the improvisational aspect of it and I think it's fun you know there's always going to be like an aspect of kind of dark comedy to my character um, uh, which I'm going to try to kind of keep you know within the bounds of, of good taste uh, but also I, 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 I and also understanding that as I kind of like test the limits of, of, of how the story works and how, you know, how much fun can we really have here? Uh, again, taking into account, you know, the other people at the table and particularly uh, the DM who has to figure out a way to kind of make the story work within, um, you know, adapt the story to work even within kind of the improvisational ideas that each of us might bring to the table. So again, it's really, really fascinating to me to learn um, how this works, both again, both in terms of the game mechanics um, and in a performative way. But, you know, uh, the bottom line is I'm going to be much better behaved going forward. Good. And so speaking of being better behaved, uh, let's get into the action. Uh, when we left off, Marengi made some bad choices. And, uh, That's I fair. Believe, I believe Smoop was about to uh, give you a salutary lesson in consequences. Previously on Dungeon Crossing, yes, uh, I was being very annoying and, and kind of derailing this whole quest before it even started. And it's, I think Smoop, as, as right, right where we left off, Smoop was about to beam me in the back of the head with a frying pan to take me out of the equation for the, for the time being so that the, the rest of you can get on with it. Smoop was inquiring about hitting you in the back of the head, so Smoop was thinking about it. 
So Smoop, how about you take that thought to action and uh, role play that out for us? Uh, well, if I remember correctly, as <laughs> Marenghi was uh, berating, uh, I'm sorry, what was what was his name again? Don John Raskin. <laughs> DJ Just Raskin, man. Either. Yeah, I needed you to repeat that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to butt back in, but before we go any further, did all of us upgrade our characters to level four? Because I did, but I don't think I, if, if that comes with like extra stat points, I don't think I distributed any of those yet. Do we, is that something we need to take care of before we go any further? Mm -hmm. Did you, so you didn't do anything extra with your character? My character is now level, level four, but I didn't, if that means that I now have additional stat points, I haven't put them anywhere yet. Okay. Um, one second. I have my okay. little. Uh, I have my little character sheet right here. You can see it right on screen. Yes, I. Uh, I went to the wrong character on D and D Beyond. And speaking of which, if my mods would like to uh, start a giveaway, and Gary, you also have two keys to give away. Oh yeah, that's really cool. So what was it D and D Beyond gave us what some players' handbooks? Correct. Yeah, we've got some keys to give away. Two oh, each. awesome! Yeah. Already doing prize giveaways on this channel. All right, so I am in your character sheet. Um, so you did make your ability score increases. That's good. You chose your, your language. That's good. Um, so you need to choose two proficiencies as a paladin. So did if you I go to your... Already? No, you did not choose your two proficiencies. So if you go to class feature... Uh, class feature, where is that? Um, if you go into your character sheet and go to edit, it's number two class. Mm -hmm. Um, wait, hold on. So I go to my character. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can click on. Okay. So I'm looking at my yeah. sheet right now. And you want to edit. Uh, where's edit? Um, it's the anvil icon. Oh, the anvil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just go to builder. All right. Yeah. Okay. Proficiencies. All right. Choose a paladin skill. Okay. Um, athletics. Insight, intimidation. Ooh, intimidation sounds good for, for Miranda. That's very on in character. Uh, so I'll pick that one. And I thought I did these before. I guess I didn't. Um, um, so remember, that can turn into a yes and or a yes but moment if you decide to try to intimidate people. And you, and you are a fallen paladin. So it's not true. like you're intimidating people into doing something good. Right. Uh, um, so just remember, yes and, yes but, and consequences. I'm going to... Oh, Go ahead. To I'm gonna so, okay. So all right, like like like, like, like I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get Marenghi back on back on board here, and not quite so not quite such a, a pain in the neck. Um, let's go with um, uh, let's go with uh, what, what uh, so Cipher. What is if I were to go with athletics? What what kind of benefit would that give me? So if you need to run, jump, if you need to do something that's not tumbling, because that would be dexterity. Okay. Um, if you have to like do some feat of like, let's say, let's say you and Barb are fighting and we're not going to actually do this for the love of God, we're not. No, <laughs> Barb and I would never fight. Barb and I get on like a house on fire. No, well, no, I mean like if you wanted to uh, cannonball special Barb, for instance. We're not, we're not fastball special. No, <laughs> no, that is what very disrespectful insights? to what a dwarf. Is <laughs> um, that's ability to reason. So if you need to make a charisma roll or um, sorry, a wisdom roll. So basically your ability to reason and use logic, which would be good for a paladin. I kind of like that, actually. I'm going to go with insight. And the other one I picked, is I, I think you said it before, medicine would be a good one. So I'm going to go with insight and medicine. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there anything else that I still need to do? Um, you need to choose a second, you need to choose a specialty of fighting style. Um, um, so go back to the, go back to the previous screen. Yeah, I'm again. back on that, uh, fighting style. Okay, ooh. Yeah. Defense, dueling, great weapon fighting and protection. And I love that about when you up, when you basically level up your character in D and D Beyond, it then spills out all of these additional things that says, right. oh, "Okay, you leveled up. You now need to make some decisions." And it's really clear, like, "Okay, click one, check one, pick one." All that. Any recommendations for me here? My choices are defense, dueling, great weapon fighting, and protection. Um, based on how you're playing Marenge, <laughs> I would go with great weapon fighting, okay. and you can always go back and make changes. Okay. Uh, and then Sacred Oath I need to pick. So this is where you decide what oath you're doing. So 
are because you are um you did say you're fallen paladin correct yeah yeah Oath oathbreaker is looking pretty good to me right now whatever that means that would be your only option because you have broken the oath to whatever um deity that that you right. felt called big to. time okay and so, then the last one is ability score improvement right so you, so you could take a feat or you could update an ability score okay um because you're still we characters i'm going to suggest ability score improvement okay because feats are very feats are sometimes very situational you may you may pick a feat and never get to use it okay and then now it lets me up to, uh do two charisma constitution dexterity intelligence strength and wisdom i guess i'll just pick uh constitution um, sure and uh strength no wisdom i want to be wise okay, okay. all right and so... i think that's all of it yes your hp updated all that's good all right is everyone else good on choices for their character is everyone feeling comfortable i think, think I, I i i input uh what you told me to i i think that was everything right did i finish it i thought i did but yeah, i can look really quick at your character before we before we get into stuff um and then we can uh get into the action so yeah sorry but i didn't mean to hold us up there i should have really done more of my homework there okay so uh you picked your racial traits which we hate the racial traits it should be more class but mm. um so you've picked there's nothing with the exclamation mark so you've picked everything you've got one thing that's restricted to you just as a dwarf <laughs> um you picked the path of the battle rager this you would like to rage as she would like to rage. Always wants to rage. As our as our friend Ashley would say. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you're good. Let's view your character sheet. Make sure you've got some. Yeah, you're good. Adam and Brian, are you feeling good about your characters? Adam and I are I'm, clearly uh, both yeah. like defer people like you first. No? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm Canadian. I can't help it. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I feel pretty good about my character. I, I still have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, I think I can manage. Okay, and we can always debrief after, or we can hop on a call later. So um, yeah, I, I added. I took God on. Damn it! My smoop window went all wrong. Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, it's a smoop window. I do this all no, over you're... again. My smoop. Smoop is always the, oh. the the issue. Did you hold on? Adam, did you move? Now I got now I got now I got to lock in on Smoop again. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, was... sorry. This is my fault. I but knew it yeah. was gonna be Smoop. Um, Using D and D, I I already added the levels. I clicked on all the exclamation points, and uh, then I kind of cheated and made like a fresh new character, and then like kind of copied all the adventurer type equipment, just like general bedroll stuff, and I did add some armor. Because I forgot to add armor. Sorry about this, everyone. Hold on. Okay, that's good. I have to, I have to kind of lock in on him all over again. Okay, that looks good. And then from the bottom is like what seven fifty, maybe a little less. Okay, that looks good. And then what I do is I drag Smoop down here, kicking and screaming, into back into the frame. Yeah, my guess is he wasn't locked in because... He, I should have locked him. It was my fault. Hold on. Yeah, because nobody was... Um, nobody's moved on my stream. Smoof does strike me as a kind of character that occasionally needs restraint. Yes. Um, he needs Smoof. a little bit more on the edge here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, um, Smoof, I'm going to look at your character sheet while Gary does that because... All right, sounds good. You've only got 19 hit points. You will die. <laughs> Fine with me. Dead weight wow. anyway. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh the no. Person, the person with a potential frying pan hovering behind their head. I know, right? Jokes about I'm not dead really weight. playing this in the most <laughs> diplomatic way right now. Um, okay, I got it. I apologize for the technical difficulties there. I have it. No, it's your turn. Your window broke. My audio said, it's, fuck you. So It streaming. wouldn't be Twitch streaming if 20 different things didn't go wrong live on it stream, right? It really would not, no. Yeah, okay. it's just... Mm, okay, so everyone's good. We're not moving. We're back. 
Yeah, I checked that. That's Smoop's HP because of his class. So, I mean, because yeah, I'm I'm 23. I'd like, base Smoop and I are both bards, and uh, yeah, you're squishy. You're squishy. Cuddly. Smart. I prefer the term cuddly. I remember. I remember somebody commenting last week when they saw our party composition. They said, "Oh, two bards. Good luck." They were well, you know what? As Barb's 49 and she's ready to rage. <laughs> I'm just standing I'm standing behind the dwarf. Two That's, bods and a bob. That is that is my plan. <laughs> okay, so let's paint a picture of exactly where we are. Uh, you know what? Since, and for, go from there. Sorry, I, and also for, for for people who may not have seen last week's episode, um should we just like very quickly reintroduce our characters to everyone so people know who's in the order of the sunfish? Sure. Um, Tell I, people who you are. I am. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I don't worry. I'm not going to do that whole terrible backstory again. I'm just going to say I am Merengue. <laughs> I am a fallen half elf aquatic uh, paladin, half aquatic elf paladin. Um, and I'm a bit grumpy some of the times. So I'll just leave it at that. Next. Uh, I am Barbara, the barbarian dwarf. <laughs> and uh Jesus. <laughs> I currently uh trying to defuse a situation. As always. Um, yeah, Archon Tiefling Bard, who is really annoyed that uh that this is messing with us getting paid. Right. Uh I am Smoop, a changeling bard, and uh I just like to look beautiful and uh not have too much confrontation other than mental confrontation <laughs> all right um yes and where we left off last week is you all you all knew each other you you came back together in this town and you took on this job which is to get don john raskin and i know you all just like hearing the name don john <laughs> raskin it's a cool name <laughs> And if you, I want to see what happens if one of you call him DJ, it's going to be a real short campaign. <laughs> DJ Raskin. He's already he's already like challenged one of us to a duel to the death. So I mean, we're we're not in good graces no. here. No, yeah. I mean that was my fault. I do, do take take full responsibility for that. It's going to be a rough trek to the mine. You may take the ultimate responsibility. No, I'm for telling it. you, you're going to see a new you're going to see new new attitude, new merengue team player. I'm all about. I, I want to get paid, just like Archon. <laughs> I want that. I want that sweet, sweet gold. All right. Um, so the, the TLDR is: you met Don John Raskin and our, our soon-to-be changed Scrooge. I mean, Marenghi is going to have a solitary lesson right now because Smoop is now behind him with this pan, about to knock him out. Uh, Adam, walk us through. Give us some. R you two, give us some RP of what that, what happens. I'm not even gonna make you roll. This is just gonna happen. Okay, so I, I basically I see what's going on. I see the situation. I I understand Marangi's maybe a little half cut and it's taking us a little far. Oh, that's and, right. Cause I had a couple of drinks in the bar, didn't I? Yeah. Uh huh. So. I approach him from behind, holding my pan up, completely forgetting that it is probably a pretty brutal cast iron pan, a very blunt object that is my plan to smack him upside the, or the back of the head and uh, maybe defuse the situation by knocking him unconscious. But I'm also wondering if that's the right thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> The, 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 the in-game cypher has a shocked face on right now. Can I, can I step in and stop the pan? Sure. Oh, please, yeah, please do. Save well, I'd like to step head. in and stop the pan, guys, because we have a job to do. Let's stop the hijinks and let's get on with our cash. Yeah, look, cash I, I, I may be a pain in the neck, but you need me. I'm, you know, I'm, and I can still help out. Yeah, while, while, while Barb is sorting this out, I'm, uh, Archon turns to, um, turns to the client. I'm just Don John Raskin. And, uh, and says, you see how dedicated we are. Who, who else would be willing to take on threats along the road? I mean, he's willing to even threaten the only way we're going to get paid. Who is better at protecting you than us? Makes a strong argument. Mm, Don John's staring at all of you and looking at, at Archon kind of like, I like you. 
you make sense, unlike that one. All right, I, I'm going to meet you downstairs in the morning. And then he, he turns to Marengi and you. I'm watching you. And uh, he goes back in his room, crisis averted. But Smoop, you still didn't get to bean anyone with the pan. Are you and Barb going to talk this out? Because I have a feeling Smoop really wanted to hit him with that pan. Oh, I, I definitely wanted to hit him with the pan, but uh, looking back at it, I appreciate Barb stepping in and and grabbing my hand before I do anything, because uh, as it turns out, I, I very quickly remember that I would be absolutely destroyed by Marengi. I'm, I'm curious so maybe, as well, was I even aware of this little drama playing out behind my back? Like, did, the, did, 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 did Smoop raise the pan and then Barb kind of like you know wave him off like was i aware of that happening or did, 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 did was i oblivious to that as it was like playing out behind me oh no i mean you're in a hallway you're in an inn so it's not <laughs> like there's a lot of room here so again this is why we had a yes but moment of you could do that but there's going to be consequences <laughs> so it's not like you're like in some giant like room you are in a hallway that's you know a few feet across and you're not crowded but there's no way you wouldn't have heard okay, this so i am aware that smoop tried to take me out with a frying pan especially once barb was like hey 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 so barb <laughs> right. what, are, what are you and smoop and are so crisis is averted what are you all doing now that you don't have to beat your party member into some sense i'd like to have some dinner and go to sleep because we, we, we have a long to, journey tomorrow. Right, the quest is in the morning, right? So we do have to stay overnight at this place. Yes. So, um, so Barb, you're going to get dinner. Uh, Smoop, Archon, Marengi, what are you all doing? Well, I, you know, I've I've learned a lot in the last few minutes about like who's got my back in this party. I feel like Barb's got my back. Smoop wants to just stab me in the back or hit me in the back of the head with a frying pan. So. In the same way that Don John Raskin has got his eye on me, I very much got my eye on Smoop right now. I'm not going to turn my back to him anytime soon. Barb, however, seems pretty cool. She seems like she's like she's looking out for me and for the the team uh, as a whole. So, you know, I've definitely got some opinions on some of these party members at this point. All right. Uh, I. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was going to say I, I would like to join Barb for dinner. All are welcome. Yeah. I'll be eating alone. I, you know. <laughs> Marengi always eats alone. We already knew you'd be eating alone after that. Dinner, uh, dinner, dinner sounds great. Uh, Arkham looks at Marengi and just says, get some food and sleep this off. Yeah, I think so. And again, did we, because I know this came up last week. Have we just, have we, sort of, are we each getting our own rooms? Uh, how we, how, how is, how are the sleeping arrangements going to be working? Because I, obviously at this point, we'll not be sharing a room with Smoot. Unfortunately, I think we are sharing a room. Uh, no, because you would not live till the morning, because I think everyone would stop you. Um, so, you know, Barb can have um, her own room, Archon and Smoop. If you're okay with it, you can share a room. Otherwise, you can just say everyone has rooms. It, you know, this is a high turnover in. It's not like it's not like an Airbnb where you're going to be living there for a week. Right. I think I think everyone should have their own room. They should have their own privacy. And yeah, again, you know, we, I think we need to limit the opportunities for this for this party to murder each other before it even gets out the door. No, correction That's... to murder you. Well, no, I mean, I mean Smoop, it goes both ways now. Yes, I did create trouble for the for the team early on when I suggested let's just murder the guy or kidnap him instead of taking him on this quest. <laughs> but, 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 but Smoop's where was that going? But, but, but Smoop's solution to whack one of his own party members in the back of the head with a frying pan, I don't, you know, that that to me felt like th th an inappropriate response. So I feel like both me and Smoop are in the doghouse right now. Trying times yeah. call for trying measures, though. In these difficult times, <laughs> uh, so dinner banter. What do you all? What do you all talk about at dinner, or is it a strained affair? <laughs> I mean, to some well, extent, it's going to have to be a bit strained, right? Right. So you're eating by yourself, definitely. Um, but I want to know what Barb, Smoop, and Archon are are talking about. And you are you are close enough where if you wanted you could overhear them, but it's it's very much everyone take a breath. We're we're just gonna have dinner. 
So I, I want to know what you all are, how are you resolving this over dinner? Uh, well, while we're eating dinner, because I'm assuming I'm eating some sort of chicken pot pie because they're delicious. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, is that canonical I, I, to the D&D world? I have no idea. Do they have chicken pot pies in this world? Uh, uh, they have chickens. I wouldn't chickens. question. I wouldn't question what the meat and the pie is, honestly. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a meat pot pie. Just, just let it happen. Just, just okay. take it and leave. Meat yeah. pie. Yeah, it's so, a pie. It's, uh, it's a bird pot pie. Okay, so time Arco- out. Time out. Yep. So this is this is a, a teaching moment for all of us. Um, one, let's try to eliminate crosstalk because I know everyone's excited and wants to talk. But if if the DM says these three characters are doing something, this one character is doing something, let them play out what they're doing. Oh, okay. Then if you have a out of character question um, before you do your in character thing, you can always say, is this a thing that would exist in D&D? And honestly, it's a fancy game. We can say whatever exists in there we want. You know, with the, up to the Eberron setting, we would have guns and steampunky type stuff. So we can even say cars exist if we wanted to. Uh, but yeah, so and it's hard because it'll be hard because A, we don't have closed captions. Um, since we're using the D and D Beyond, and that takes the overlay slot for closed captions. Right. And people would only get mine anyway. As we go forward, I'm going to try to figure out a way to do closed captions for everyone, but it's a it's a whole lot of it's a whole extra step. Um, but also, um, in out of character questions can either be like put in backstage chat or held until it is it is your turn to talk because. You know, again, this this kind of goes back to the collaborative thing, and that's for all of us because we're all kind of talking over each other. So, as we as we go forward, so if, if the DM and this goes for any table you sit at, if the DM says, "Okay, well, Marangi, you're by yourself. What are you doing? You know, what are you reflecting on, or are you just like I'm eating and then going to bed?" And that's your chance to kind of RP out like your character's reaction to things. Right. So you're there. You can overhear them if you want. But the focus right now is on the three characters, and then we'll and then we'll shift to your character. Got it. Can I so so can I just make one statement about the disposition of my character before we move forward? Sure. I am I am sitting alone, but I have quite deliberately positioned myself alone at a different table where I it is close enough for me to hear what you guys are talking about. Right, and that's what I meant by you clearly can overhear them. So right, it's right, not, right. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like a giant like hall like at a hotel banquet hall. This is. You know, when you see fantasy movies and everybody's crowded together and there's long tables or round tables, yeah. that's where it is. So it's not like there's any good way you could not overhear them. Even if you sat, you know, think right. of Lord of the Rings when, what's his name, the ranger, um, how he's sitting there and he overhears everything. Right. But there was no way for him not to overhear it because you're still in this inn. Got so, it. so yeah. All right. So I'm by myself and you guys can do your thing. Yeah. So, okay, time out over. What is the happening with dinner with you three? All right. Uh, so basically just to demonstrate how little I dwell on issues, uh, we're sitting at the table and we're eating our meat. Well, I'm eating a meat pie. And I look around the table and ask the others. Uh, so when you all get to the bottom of your meat pie and it's just the crumbs in the pan left, mm. do you pick out the crumbs and put them in your mouth or do you lift the pan and dump them in your mouth or like some kind of a monster do you pick up the pan and pour the crumbs into your hand and eat them from your hand i don't eat the crumbs wow archon just turns and looks at smooth (laughs) what is wrong with you we have utensils oh well i didn't know that we should plan our route. So, it, it seems a pretty cut and dry. Uh, I think we, I think we estimated fifteen miles between here and there. If we're getting up and leaving first thing in the morning, it's 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 going to be a a long walk. I, I don't think uh, I don't think the client's much of a sprinter. He's the innkeeper said he had a lot of baggage. Are we right. going to get Are stuck we... carrying his bags? Yeah, I wonder. Do we need oh. to rent uh, some kind of a uh, wagon? <laughs> Do we know how much we have to move? <laughs> Dang it, we didn't get that. We didn't clarify that. I guess I'll we can just wait until the morning. <laughs> uh, that's true, too. You do have the strength. 
Um, are you asking me as a DM, or is this just what you're talking about? A little of column A, a little of column B. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, worst I, case, I remember, we, we can find us, in the morning. Yeah, I remember us talking about, like, the bartender said he had, you know, he's, he's basically, like, he was hoity-toity, had a bunch of bags, and I'm yeah. realizing that he's moving, like, the job is that he's now taking over at the mine, so, yeah, it sounds like there might, we, we probably need to worry about a conveyance for that, too. Okay, so he's got some baggage, but nothing he couldn't have like carried himself with one small pack animal. And when you leave in the morning, you'll know they'll bring around his small pack animal, but he's not like laden with stuff. Cause this is a mine. It's not like he's going to be living comfortably. All right. Well, I, since I'm done eating and, uh, I, I think I'd like to get a, this show on the road. I say good night to everyone and head to my room. Okay. Good night. Uh, uh, Barb and Archon, are you are you talking much? What are you What are you doing after being left alone with Smoop taking taking sleep? Archon, I want to get this over with tomorrow. So whatever you can do to make sure keep everybody on track, keep everybody in line, keep emotions out of it. Let's just get this job done. Yeah, Archon just lets like this longest ass like <sighs> I can't believe it. <laughs> can't believe this happens yeah i agree i would like for us to uh, i would like for us to get this money and i would like for us to move on i feel like we've already spent too much time here already good glad we're on the same page uh now that smoop has gone to bed merengue is now able to wander over because smoop was really the only reason why he wasn't at that table the only member of the party he actually had a problem with barb and archon seem pretty cool but smoop okay. clearly is not someone that merengue is going to be able to get along with now that okay. he's taken himself to bed, I can come over and join the, the members of the group I actually respect. And um, <laughs> and uh, and say, hey, listen, I uh, just want to let you know, listen, I, I got a lot of baggage in my life and sometimes that spills over. And uh, I apologize if I um, accidentally jeopardized the, uh, the, this potentially very lucrative quest uh, by suggesting that instead of actually accepting the job, we just kill the guy and rob him or hold him for ransom. Uh, that, you know, on, on reflection, that probably wasn't the best choice I could have made in the moment. Um, having said that, I am very aware of, 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 of how you all reacted to it. Smoot was the only one who went for the frying pan. And uh, I just want to let you know that I've got my eye on him for the rest of this, for the rest of this quest. You guys, but you guys seem pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm excited to, be, uh, to get up early in the morning and, uh, and make some money. Great. Sounds good. All right, so are you all just hanging out, or is everyone just kind of eating and then going their separate ways, or going to bed, getting some yeah, rest? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to get into the get into the action early. I go going to bed early, so I'm well rested for the for the quest in tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so nothing happens overnight. Uh, everyone sleeps peacefully. No one tries to rob you because that would just be too much on top of of, of the shenaniganry, and. Uh, because, you know, I could be evil and just have someone break in your room and steal your stuff, but that would be rude. Um, so the next morning comes. Um, so this is a chance to talk about your character and to get to know them. All of you, would your character be kind of a, the sun's in my face, I'm awake now, or a more of a, I hate life, why is it not dark in this room? What What is all this noise and the noise of the inn and others wake you? What would your character do? Like, how would you wake up in the morning? I jump right out of bed after only about five to six hours of sleep, and I'm just as energetic as I was when I went to sleep. And they all hate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, Marengi is very much the opposite. Not not a morning person. Um, not not really an any time of day person, really. Um, uh, but I do eventually crawl myself out, uh, drag myself out of bed because I know there's money to be made, and that's what that's what motivates Merengue. Is just the the, the 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 sweet that sweet sound of the clinking of gold coins in my pocket. That's what I that's what I'm all about. Okay. Arms up. She's a self motivator. Time to start the day. I need Barb to run my life because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. Um, 
Archon is Archon is up early um, and scowling about it. But if anybody, if, if the minute he has to interact with anybody, it is all smiles, chipper, and that person at the office you hate, who who says who insists on saying good morning and getting a good morning back from everyone. Oh. But if no one's looking, it's like, <laughs> mm, wow, that's interesting. I would not have expected that of Archon, knowing you as I do. Um, so you all can can go get breakfast, and uh, Don John has been up. He was up before the sun because you know he wouldn't be where he is in life if he was a layabout. And he comes down. He's got a, a pack securely on his back, and uh, he he signals to the barkeep to to get his other things ready with or they're on the pack animal. And he he spots you all. Are you are you all sitting at the same table? Yeah, I think so. Yes, yes. I believe yeah, so. We're, yes. we're assembled. Yeah. The order has assembled. Um, <laughs> so uh, Don John comes over and he, he sits next to um, he sits next to Archon because he, he actually did like you and he, he liked how you and Barb managed things yesterday. Um, it's like so. Mm-hmm. Oh my god so this is where where we get uh ridiculous so uh so don john sits next to you and uh, i'm gonna give you a description of don john just so you know what you're dealing with um and it's it's fun because after so a little aside after the first game i looked him up and i was like oh my god you would have died you would have died so hard <laughs> um of course now it doesn't want to let me find the picture I thought I had saved. Um, Mountain Toast Gold Mine, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, I can find it. I'm just like, oh my god, why yeah, is if it you, like this? If you, I think it's Don John. I hear music. Oh, that was someone else. Um, Don John Raskin. Uh, so imagine Crocodile Dundee, but a big black dude. Oh, wow. Okay. He's, uh, he's got like the hat with like the teeth of dragons that he's that he's vanquished. He's got a giant dragon tooth necklace. He's got a gold hoop in one ear. And I'm trying to give a good cartoon version. Because uh, I want to say Uncle Ruckus, but no, not Uncle Ruckus. And you know, instead of a cigarette or or a, a leaf or anything, he's he, he's chewing a toothpick for whatever reason. Somehow, toothpicks exist in D and D at this point. So he's a big black dude, and he would have smeared you into paste had you pers- <laughs> had, had I known this last week, I wouldn't have started all this trouble. I thought he was like some kind of like you know, uh, you know, 110 pounds soaking wet fancy Dan that I could have taken out easily. But he sounds like a, a real a real tough guy. Oh yeah, he he would have made he would have made paste out of you. Um, so he comes over, he sits down, like he's got like his leather vest. The leather vest is like made of dragon scales, and you assume that he must have killed the dragon it came from because he looks this tough. You know, wearing a, a, a standard shirt, uh, leather trousers, boots. He looks basically like he came out the Dungeons and Dragons version of the Wild West, except he probably wrangles dragons in his spare time for fun. I have an Im- Im- I have an image of him up that my wife found now, uh, Cypher, up, awesome. up on my screen. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yeah, that's Don John Raskin that you are seeing. Um, I wish you'd have described him this way last what, last week, Cypher. We could have avoided have avoided all this unpleasantness. I would never have started some grief with this guy my goodness it looks like he wiped the floor with me but it gave you a salutary lesson in 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 yes but and consequences it did i learned a lot it was a, it definitely was a teachable moment um so you know that's who you're escorting and he he's sitting over with barb and archon he's like so you know do you is this what you do all the time and you know and he he gets breakfast brought over to him because he's he's that kind of important guy and while he's eating, he, he's talking mostly to Barb and Archon. He wants to kind of feel you out, see what you're about. Because he's not sure that you all could really escort him. 
because he, he's also of a mind of like, I don't need this. Why are people making a big deal? But since a lot of people don't seem to get from point A, which is the end, to point B, which is the mine, he's concerned enough to have hired you all and put this board out. So what are you all talking with him about as everyone kind of finishes breakfast and, and gets themselves together for this trek? I uh, would like to take the opportunity, uh, Don John Raskin, to apologize uh, to you for the misunderstanding last night. I had had a couple of drinks. My vision was blurry, and I didn't I didn't really get a good sense of, of, of who you are and what you looked like. If I'd have known that you were this, this badass character uh, chewing a toothpick and looking like you could uh, wipe the floor with me, I, uh, I would have been much more amenable. And um, I uh, just want to say that this, this, that this quest, I think, is going to be great for everyone. Looking forward to making some money. Um, keep your eye on Smoop because I do think he's the weak link in the chain. Uh, but other than that, I think this. I, th- I think we're gonna we're gonna get along just great, and uh, we're all gonna we're all gonna get what we want out of this. No, no one needs to get hurt. He just looks at you. He's like, "Let me give you a bit of advice. You should talk less and smile more." Wow. Eel. <laughs> wow. Hey, Don John, where do you get that sweet vest? Oh, this? He, he like, puffs up a little bit because he's excited that someone knew about it. He's like, Kill, killed a few dragonlings back in my day. You know, I was a little younger than I am now. Not so much snow on the roof. But uh, one of my last big adventures before I settled into this mining overseer bullshit, found some dragonlings. It was a tough fight. Lost a couple men, but in the end, got the sweet vest. I even have some armor. Well, that's made out of dragon. It's made out of dragon. Man, I, I, Did you I, come I, here to fix the dragon? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just, I, I'm just saying. I really underestimated this guy. I'm I, I <laughs> regretting like last <laughs> night more and more. <laughs> did, uh, did you come here to solve the dragon problem? Uh, if the dragon messes with the mine, I can take a stab at it. Is that what you all are here for? After you get me to uh, where I gotta be considering it well well you're a you're a, a dwarven warrior that a dragon should be nothing for you thanks he he's like he's really digging barb because she's so no nonsense <laughs> he, he's liking her um smoop what are you doing you seem to be a little quiet over there uh enjoying your whatever you're eating uh they're called fruit loops they're a delicious grain based product that I myself love. Uh, they're actually uh, quite delicious. And uh, so, of course, I'm not talking too much. I, I was admiring the vest. I'm looking forward to what we're doing today. I'm getting pretty sick of merengue uh, throwing me under the bus for literally everything, but it's okay. Let it slide. Um, all right. He's just, he just nods and uh, he looks over to you, Archon. He's like, so when we're done with this, are you going to go look for that dragon too? Uh, you know, I, I hadn't honestly planned to start my day dragon hunting. Um, oh, but not, it is, not today. Not today. It's intriguing. I mean, even if somebody as well prepared as you is, let's simply say, has um, a, a self preserve a sense of self-preservation about what seems to be a fair trek um to the mine something interesting is is got to be going around here and that usually means there's a story involved and usually i, I have to survive so i can tell the story to somebody else fair fair all right well uh whenever you all get ready and and pay up for your room i'll be i'll be outside with my donkey Okay. All right. I, I'm all paid Sounds up. Good. I took care of that first thing yep. this morning. I see you, Brian. I see you. <laughs> I'm like, I, I see the struggle. I'm five. What can I do? <laughs> I, I thought it was a pony you were supposed to ride like that, not a donkey. Brian's never talking to me again, ever. <laughs> He's never going to talk to me again. Um, 
So after you all get everything ready, make sure you've not left anything in your rooms because you probably will never come back here again. Who knows? You never know. It's D&D. &D. Um, you, you step outside and Don John is... Um, He's standing next to this donkey. It's kind of a, it's a pack animal. It's not meant for riding. And all the, all the stuff you were worried about him having is neatly put in the two saddlebags beside his adventure pack. And, you know, he's, he's kind of raring to go whenever you are. What do you all want to do? Are you, are you going to, like, how are you forming up around this person you're escorting? All right. So, yeah, we should uh, probably think about this tactically, right? Because our job is to protect this guy. Uh, to get him from here to the mines. I stand beside him and ask him if he wants to hold my hand while we walk together. I mean... He looks like a hand holder. I... Okay. Smoop. As Marengi, I gotta step in here and, uh, and say, look, I, I'm here to make some money. And... I, I, I fully accept the part that I played in getting us in this guy's bag books right out of the out of the out of the out of the gate. Uh, but I, I, let's 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 get this thing back on track here. Let's talk tactically. I kind of feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know I've 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 been in a few battles in my time. I've I've uh, I, I've, I've I've seen my share of, of action, and uh, tactically I think that we should form a uh, a perimeter around uh, Don John to ensure that we're protected from all sides. Barb, as the barbarian, I think probably should take point, lead the way, uh, you know, keep her, keep her eagle eyes out for any uh, possible uh, uh, threats coming down the road. Um, uh, and uh, maybe me and Archon can take, uh, take either side, take the flanks. And Smoop, you could bring up the rear, you know, make sure nothing comes up from behind. And also maybe, you know, whatever, whatever crap this donkey puts out, you know, maybe you want to take care of that as well since you'll be back there anyway. Uh, you know, make yourself useful back there. Protect, protect our hindquarters, and take care of those other hindquarters as well while you're back there. I feel like that would protect us from all sides uh, and give us the best tactical um, loadout that we could that we could hope for as we uh, as we go on this potentially perilous journey. Awesome, I'm on board with that plan. I'll so question carry up the rear. All right, so question before you continue: Are any of you going to push back on or question? Um, the tactics put before you. Um, so question: We it's it's really right now. It's our um, Don John has um has a pack animal right. here. We're walking. Yeah, because this thing is like imagine like when you were a kid. No, I'm not a kid. Like if you if you're a kid and went to a petting zoo and the donkey was big enough to ride then, but as an adult you went back to that petting zoo. <laughs> okay. So we're all on foot. Yeah, you're all on foot. This thing has a pack. Uh, this thing is a pack animal. Okay. Um, no one's expected to ride it. Barb, if you wanted, you were probably the only one who could ride the donkey. I mean, and it's not, I'm not being funny. Like dwarves are usually shorter. Um, everyone else that is like humanoid would be too tall. Like your legs would graze the ground riding this donkey. If she's riding a donkey though, she'd probably be less able to spring into action, you know, at short notice if she needed to. I'm not riding the donkey. I'm leading the way. <laughs> we don't know that. She could do some sick moves leading up that donkey's back. I mean, maybe, short, maybe she's short short notice, Gary. Maybe what she's are you trying to say there? Donkey-based combat. I don't know what Bob's, you know, particular training <laughs> background Awful. is. Um, I feel like then, she's full of surprises. I mean, stranger things have happened in a D&D &D game. I'm just saying that for all intents and purposes, you are in I'm just making sure that everyone is okay. And if there's anyone who wanted to um if anybody wanted to take the lead and just so so it's a it's a chance for both for you all as players and as a group to make sure that your collaboration is kind of there so if if anyone has other ideas or if you're all fine with this formation and everything else then uh feel free to jump in with it or if you're all you all agree the the hard part is when you are kind of in a situation where there's a group but there's not yet combat um and we probably could have talked about this before we started the stream is the group dynamic is someone more of a leader is someone more of a tactician is someone more of a oh shit, there's something to fight um let's go 
So just thinking about that stuff. And it's not that you no one's done anything wrong. It's just a chance to, to talk about that because the group dynamic both in and out of combat is important to think about. Yeah, so that was going to be my question. Does the, the decision we make now about how we arrange ourselves in this group, in this formation, is that likely to have an impact on any subsequent combat encounters that might happen? Um, it could. It would all depend on what you run across, um, who's in front, who notices the, the threat first. Because as you go, someone, you know, someone may get a sneak attack on you. Or if one of you decides, okay, what's my passive perception or passive insight? And you are always like, so Barb, because you're a warrior, you may have a really high passive perception to threats to you. And as you're walking down the road, you may notice, oh shit, there's like a, a spider. Not that I'm going to throw spiders at you because I hate that in RPGs. But there's a giant spider and Barb's the only one that notices because she's got like such high passive perception. So ideally, she would be the first to notice it and if she notices and it doesn't see her first like this spider's just minding its business but she's like it's a threat like when you see a spider at home and step on it she can get a sneak attack and destroy this thing and i and then you'd roll initiative because she would go first having perceived it so it's all going to depend on what kind of combat if any you get into okay does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. I mean, my, my only thinking was because Barb is like the toughest, like the, the most like fighter class out of all of us that I would put her, you know, at the vanguard. But I didn't really think, you know, I wasn't really thinking in terms of stats or abilities beyond that. Yeah. And, you know, and Barb, Barb is the highest HP character. But again, anything can happen during combat. You can get knocked down. Someone can knock prone. Um, you could be like, you know what? I'm out because there is a flea option. You could be like, you know what? <laughs> I don't, this is not, I'm not about that life. I'm leaving. <laughs> um, no, Archon, this sounds good. Um, but you know, he's, he's actually more, you know, he, he's again playing like the kind of charming, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good idea. I think obviously, obviously, um, Barb and, and Marenghi, y'all, y'all should, y'all should kind of keep up front and, and we'll, but you know, let's keep this casual. Like we don't want to go out looking for trouble. We, we just want to make sure that if any trouble happens, we're equipped. We're not, we're not trying to like ask any random band of rogues. Oh, Hey, they look like they're worth attacking. So, you know, it's like a casual stroll. I agree. Are we, oh, are, we ready, are we ready our... to, um, I mean, are we ready to head out or do we need to make any, uh, do, we, do we need to um, figure anything else out before we head out? Because, you know, daylight's burning and it was, as long as we're standing around here, we're not making any money. I mean, is everyone ready to roll? Let's go. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, you you leave. The innkeeper is kind of glad to see everybody go because he didn't like Don John anyway. <laughs> he thought Don John was a jackass, as it were. Um, and you're, you're leaving, so depending on what obstacles you encounter, you may get there before sunset. So it's, it's, it's a nice bit of a walk, but it's not impossible to do in one day. Um, so as, as you're walking around, yes, was there a no, question? No, I will wait. And no, go ahead and ask. Because, I, yeah, I, I was going to say, since we're, since we're walking, I was wondering when would be an appropriate time for my character to essentially just say, like, based on the perception because his passive perception is pretty high he's actually keeping an eye out like is that something that you would just say as we start as we start walking or would you kind of wait until we encountered something to kind of mention that um i would wait and also what i was what i would do slash may plan to do is like after five minutes real time but more time in game say okay everyone give me a perception check and you would factor that high passive in and so depending on what you roll, even with a high passive, your character probably would notice something. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, so you're you're all going. Don John is very happy to regale you with stories of his exploits. <laughs> he he has a captive audience, and you know, and, and he's being a smug jackass. He really is trying to impress you all. Not that, you know, all of you can can accept that, not accept it, but he's all about trying to, uh, trying to, you know, get in your good graces, make himself look really good to you all. 
because he he doesn't uh he doesn't really think about these things very well. So you've been walking about an hour or so, um, and since Brian slash Archon brought it up, everyone give me a perception check. Ooh, do I have to roll something for that? Yes. So on your character sheet, um, if you look at your skills, okay, um, there is perception. You would click the plus or whatever uh, it is. Yeah, I have a plus one. Okay, so I'm going to... So click that and you will roll. I'm going to roll. 13. Okay. 10. 15. Okay. Okay. Hold on. 12. Okay, so you're not oblivious. And, you know, the road is dangerous, which is why Don John hired you. What you find as you're walking, and again, who got the highest uh, perception roll? Archon. Archon. So, Archon, you notice a rustling in some bushes ahead of you, and you're not sure what it is, but it is something that kind of puts you on alert. Um, let's see. Uh, Archon just like takes a noticeable slow down, like doesn't stop, doesn't halt, just kind of like noticeably kind of like heaves his shoulders and just slows his pace a little bit, kind of like trying to gather, trying to att attract other party members' attention, just, you know, like, like eh, something's up. Okay. Uh, what do you all do when you notice Archon uh, change in stance? Uh, what is it? Yeah, uh, Merengue is instantly a little bit, um, you know, ready, ready to go here because the um, the incident many years ago in which uh, my entire Merengue's entire village was wiped out by marauding uh, bandits started with a suspicious rustling in the bushes. So you know that I'm instantly kind of like, you know, I'm I'm, I'm already all you know any any rustling, any sign of suspicious behaviour instantly has uh, Merengue on edge. So he's already got his uh, hand on his uh, on his flail. Uh, I'm going to be remembering my uh, my my scimitar, uh, and I'm, right. I'm, I'm I'm ready I'm ready to pop off here if if, if it looks like it's going to go south at a moment's notice. All right. I'm sure it's nothing but some animals in the underbrush. Just you know, we haven't really heard a lot while we've been walking. Okay. I've been enjoying I've been enjoying the stories. Uh, Barb and Smoop, what do you do? I know I heard Barb say you asked you asked what was wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, what about you, Smoop? What are you doing? Uh, I I have pretty high perception too, so I'm paying close attention to what's going on, but I'm also at the same time uh, trying to kick the latest donkey poop uh, off the path with my foot. Yeah, it's donkey poop. Nobody cares. It's a road. No one no one cares. Smoop uh, cares. <laughs> all right. Aww. Uh, little... <laughs> Smoop tear with looking out over the pollution. Kind of. <laughs> Smoop, Smoop can be an, uh, Smoop can be the environmental one out of the group. Um, so, so the the rustling bush is still a few feet away, and and you get closer, even though you you slowed down a little bit. Uh, everyone, give me another perception check. Ooh, another one. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna go back to my eighteen. Sheet here. All right, eighteen. Barb. Okay. Nineteen. Let me roll mine real quick. You are far more perceptive. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Not... I got 23. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Nice. 12. Okay, so, and everyone's adding their their, their bonuses um, to I'm to using the rolls. The, yeah, yeah, I'm the using app, the dice roller, so it's me. already doing that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah, I forget sometimes, so I'm just making sure. <laughs> um, so, Barb... You, by, by dint of kind of being in the front and being super, like, on alert, you notice what seems to be furry legs and eventually a snout. And there's a very, very large wolf that comes out of the brush. And, you know, being a dwarf and... and and used to, to things that are sometimes in the dark, you will know that this is a dire wolf. It is, it is not, it is not a friend. It is not tameable. It is not your buddy. 
and uh, you see it turn its attention right to you because you noticed it first. What do you do? Can I intimidate it away? Uh, sure, or if you have animal handling, you can try to make it a friend, but I don't know how that's going to work for you. You can try. Um, all right, so how are you intimidating the wolf? You know, the way one does with coyotes, where you make yourself large and loud and it runs? <laughs> no. Are dire wolves similar to coyotes? Because that's what you have to do with coyotes. <laughs> Uh, except that dire wolves are about six times the size of a coyote, but sure. I would like to avoid killing the, the dire wolf. Okay. Uh, yeah, go go ahead and that's going to be an animal handling role. So Bob okay. is like flap, flapping her arms around and trying to scare this thing off. Is that the is that the play here? Uh. Hey. Yes. Okay. I'm going to try to scare it first, so it, see if we can get it to run off. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm rolling. I got a two. That didn't maybe work out for me so well. No. Oh, it's a five. Sorry. It's still not, still not enough to uh, charm the animal or intimidate it away. Yikes. Um, so, but the thing is, the, the dire wolf doesn't attack. It looks very confused. It's not... <laughs> I bamboozled it. <laughs> or the bamboozler. There you go. <laughs> you know what? Just for the sake of fun and RP, I want you to, to act out trying to, t showing what bamboozling this dire wolf in the confusion looks like for us. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> all, of, all, all of Shannon's acting training is paying off in this moment. This <laughs> um, I love it. So normally a dire wolf would be terrified of, uh, well, not terrified. It would be terrifying to all of you because dire wolves are no joke. But instead, the dire wolf kind of sits back on his haunches. And you know, like the RCA dog. Huh? <laughs> okay. Like, you can't figure out what this what this strange creature is doing. It's like like it's it's confused. Like, is it food? Is it a friend? <laughs> um. And it like leans forward to sniff at you because it's trying to figure out what you're doing and what you are. All right. I mean, it hasn't attacked <laughs> us yet. It's, it's, something's working. <laughs> I'm just I'm loving the bamboozling. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're, running um, it. we're running with it. A quick time, uh, out of character. Sure. Uh, is that so? When it comes, like we've we've come across this dire wolf. Is it in our best interest to do some sort of uh, like in a perception role or something to decide whether or not we're going to need to fight this animal? Or do we have uh, more, more, more interesting options? Like, do we just fight it or is there other things we should be looking at doing? Other avenues we should be approaching it? Yeah, how much? I'm how much is it? it. <laughs> I'm 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 down with the the bamboozle is working. So. I'm, I'm always down with a bit of bamboozling, as you know. Um, but uh, Merengue, as as Bob uh, flaps her arms around uh, like a like some kind of I don't know what, like a dwarven uh, crazy person. Um, I, de I at this point have my scimitar halfway out of its scabbard, just in case the bamboozling backfires, and uh, we need to we need to deal with the. Uh, uh, a very angry, uh, but nonetheless, bamboozled wolf. Uh, the wolf is is definitely focused on Barb, and and Barb, it's it's now like kind of reaching, like it's it's you know like how animals find a strange thing is probably like something people left, or it came across some like detritus like in the forest, and the animals like the fuck is this? Where where did this come from? That's why I was kind of looking at you like. You're not acting like food, and you're not a friend, you're not a wolf. So you've confused this wolf, not on purpose, but you have, you have confused the dire wolf. And it leans forward to sniff at you. Do you let it sniff you? 
I do. Okay, I'm going to roll for the dire wolf. Wait, the dire wolf gets to roll? Barb used confusion. It was super effective. (laughs) Oh, shit. Yes. Uh, (laughs) uh, Creatures do get to roll. That's, I mean. They have stats. They have stats. I'm looking at the dire wolf stats right now. I had no idea. Okay. Yes. So that's why we're saying enemies and NPCs have stat blocks. Players and player characters and NPCs that will be major uh, players in a campaign will have a character sheet because they will have adventures they'll go with you etc but animals and enemies and monsters all have stat blocks and it tells tells the dm this this enemy has x amount of hp this is what it's resistant to this is what it can do as an attack so normally most dms probably been like well you failed the dire wolf attack sheet but we're gonna have fun with this so the dire wolf does have stats Um, So I'm rolling... um, Do we get to know what the stats are or do we only find that out as as the encounter plays out? uh, You don't get to know what the stats are, but nothing is stopping you from looking that up. But that would be metagaming. Um, If you look up stuff when we're not playing, you're more than free to. But a lot of times when players will sit at a table with like either the books or D&D Beyond or whatever and either read ahead in an adventure so they kind of know what's happening or what's supposed to happen or you're looking up the creatures... That doesn't um, sound like fun. I don't want to do that. No, but there are people who met a game. We can talk about that when we uh, kind of wind down. Um, so the dire wolf doesn't see you as a threat, but it's not sure what to do with you, Barb. So it 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 like kind of like raises a paw, like it's gonna shake. But then it, it's just like what? Do, like because you're still flailing about. So it's like, do, do I stop? Do what, do I pet it? Like what do I do with it? Do I have any food on me? Oh yeah, you'd have road rations, you have an adventure pack, so you'd have some food. Can I toss something to the side to give it something to go eat while we continue on? Okay, you can try that. Okay, should I roll for that? No, I'm go- you throw the thing, I'm gonna roll and see how the dire wolf uh, reacts. Okay. And just tell me what kind of food it is that you are, are trying to distract the dire wolf with. I'd like it to be a meat. So like if you've got jerky a in, a, in a pack or something, that'd be perfect. Um, oh, the dire wolf failed. Not a crit fail, but the dire wolf cannot resist this jerky that you've like pulled out of your pack and flung away. Oh, the gambit paid off. Nice. So yes, uh, the dire wolf is sufficiently distracted. It's like, and it just dashes off. Barb the wolf. Well played, Bob. <laughs> Barb. Diffusing the situation with some jerky. Barb, you have uh, Barb, you have distracted the dire wolf. No one had to fight it. You didn't have to kill this wolf that really wasn't bothering you and probably was like, oh, hey, pray. And then it was like very confused by you flailing about and trying to bamboozle it. Um, and actually with the wolf's departure, that's a good spot for us to take a five minute break. Everybody stretch, get water. Um, get a snack if you need it. So the dire wolf's having a snack. We should too. Um, Bob, I... though, quickly emerging as the MVP of the group here, getting us out of all kinds of dire straits. Dire wolf straits, in fact. Wow. Wow. Sorry. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm going to mute everyone in the call and then take it. So I'm going to send everyone to a break screen on my. Yeah, I'm going to go to a break screen uh... as well. And I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to see what's happening with, um, with audio, Your maybe audio. in the break. Right. But yes, first I'm going to send you all to a BRB screen. All so right, back, out, in, we'll back, back in a few off. minutes. Yeah. Um, are we, are we ready to roll? Yeah. Let's ride. Let's go. Right. Okay, so the dire wolf has been uh, dispatched, and uh, we're ready to move on again, right? Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Archon yes. just has one, like, just to. Archon just wants to see what the client, what, what the client's reaction was to our expert oh, animal good point. handling. The customer is always right. Going to see how the how how like Don just John's just just, a, just to see what like the look on his face is. Yeah. Uh, so Don John Raskin, a man of many talents and renowned and you know he's a legend in his own mind if if you ask so ask him and he says so himself he's just like that's a first for for a a dire wolf 
you know, I've got a pair of boots made out of direwolf hide, but never saw one basically kind of just confused away. That was impressive. Yes. That was an internal yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, he, he is, he is impressed with you, uh, Barb, and actually, uh, um, the next time you have to roll, um, you have a point of inspiration. I have to roll? Yeah, when you roll, you got a point of inspiration. So that means, you know, let's say you want to re-roll something, not advantage, but you are inspired because it's, because Don John thinks highly of, of how you scared the wolf away. He, he is inspired and impressed. Oh, there's a spot for that on the character sheet. There is. Cool. Uh, so yes, Barb, for that interpretive dance of, of scaring away the <laughs> dire wolf. Yeah. You get a point of inspiration to use at your discretion later. And oh, okay. Blow up. Where does it, where, do I like store it on my sheet? Somewhere? Yeah, there's a spot on your sheet for inspiration. Uh, let me see if I can find it really quick. Uh, Marengi, Archon. It is between your walking speed and your hit points. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you click on it and it makes a little sun icon. So you have inspiration. Um, and if you're on mobile, it might be at the top um, with your hit points. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see it. I see it. Oh, got it. And I just like click it re- and it turns red. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. And uh, something in the game is also making noise, so I'm gonna I'm gonna mute the audio for the game for me because something. Yeah, I, have in the... I have it muted for me too. Something was. Is it the fan? Something. The I fan think in the game. We might have accidentally. I'm trying to see if we accidentally turned something on or not, but I can't see it. Uh, if you mute the game audio, we can put the tiki torches back on too. Um. Yeah, we can. I muted it because whatever that noise is, I think it's the exhaust fan that's over the door. Oh, okay. Also, the um, the exit sign makes a noise too. Oh, does it? Old, so everything in this game reason, makes everything a makes a noise. Buzzing and, like on that, like in Animal <laughs> Talking, when the TV cameras are on, they look better when they're on, but they make like a buzzing sound, and it's, oh, it's wow. not super helpful. Yeah. All right, uh, and you know we can also show chat. Oh, dang it! Why can't I get in my damn chair? <laughs> All right. Chairs are tricky. They are. Um, I believe a certain for, fandom would agree. But for a, a dra- for a dramatic moment, we have this. I'm not going to leave it that way because we can't see each other. But the lights from our laptops are are lighting us. Oh, I love it! So Spooky. dramatic. So yes, um, but that is when we have a dramatic moment, and there are tiki torches. Hopefully, we will not uh, burn the house down, but we can go go that way. It looks um, good. Yeah, I, I see, Brian. I, I see that. That what is that? The flirt? The what is, reaction is it? Blush? It's a uh, bashful. Uh, okay, I know. I know. Know the names of them. Dead Nabbit, stay in this fucking chair. <laughs> I'm just gonna do all the Animal Crossing emotes. Yep. The DM's had enough of everyone's shit. She's leaving. All right, I'm back in my chair. I'm putting my chair. We really back. should be acting with our Animal Crossing characters more, I, I think. Like when a dire wolf comes out, we should all have looked like shocked or something, you know? It's busy bamboozling. I, I mean, oh, true. I'm sorry. That's right. We 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 got some bamboozling there's going. Multiple so disciplines here. You know, I, I got to appreciate the bamboozling. Acting, the, the voice acting. There's a lot going on. Yes. All right. So um, you have sufficiently bamboozled this dire wolf. <laughs> Um, and you, you resume, you know, uh, your, your person you're guiding, Don John Raskin is officially impressed with all of you. And, you know, if this was like a video game, um, you know how characters approval can go up. So his approval rating has gone up a little bit of all of you, even oh. you, because you handled that well, there was no unnecessary bloodshed and, you know, he was impressed that it didn't turn into a probably quick but bloody fight with this dire wolf. So you you travel on a few more hours, and I want you all to give me uh, yet another perception check. Can do. Uh, let me see. I got plus one to perception. Eleven. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, B. What is that? I rolled a B for Beyond. 
Uh, that means you got a nat 20. The B. Oh, woo. <laughs> so is, that like the, is that the best thing I can roll? Yes. Yes. Nice. 21 with my plus point. Yes. And Barb, what did you perceive? I got an eight. Hmm. So Barb, the, the bamboozling of the dire wolf has rattled you a little bit because you were like full of adrenaline. You were ready to fight. Then it's like, I've just scared away a dire wolf. This isn't what I thought would happen. Um, and Marengi, you are, you are like hyper aware. You, you feel good after you all didn't have to fight this thing. And you are focused on the sooner we get to the mine, the sooner we get the money. This is where your brain is. However, you see a shadow coming across the road. And you're not sure if it's, if it's a person or what it is. But as you approach, um, you, you just notice shadows on the road. So what do you tell the rest of them? You don't know what it is yet, but you, you are seeing shadows on the road. Are these shadows coming from the sky? Is it possible to discern what, where, the, what, where these shadows might be coming from? Uh, the shadows are coming from, you know, it's still daylight, but the shadows are, are the sun on, causing a shadow of whatever's in the road. They okay. can see the shadow before you see what it is. All right. Well, um, again, Marengi is very paranoid. It's what's kept him alive all this long. Uh, all this time and I've come to trust my very um, uh, paranoid instincts uh, over the years and so again I instantly on alert hand hand on the scabbard uh, you know muscles tensing definitely ready for something to pop off Barb did get us out of that first scrape but there's no you know we, we're probably not going to get lucky twice so I'm kind of very hyper alert and I let the other you know let the others know hey listen I, I'm seeing some very suspicious shadows. Don't know what's causing them yet, but you know, everybody, uh, be on your guard. And actually, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna call the convoy to a halt. I'm gonna do the kind of the military thing where I go like that, and uh, and everyone instantly knows that they need to like stop because uh, I don't want to get any closer to the shadows until I know what is uh, what's uh, what's causing them. All right. So you see Marengi do this. What do you all do in response? <laughs> Paladin power? I um no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm waiting. Um if he stops moving, um yeah, I stop moving. When I stop, you stop, we all stop. Mhm. Mm so the party has come to when a I halt. When I stop, you stop, we stop. Yep. Yes. And when I move, you move. <laughs> See you all got it. You got You put it. your hand up just like this. <laughs> stop, I stop, we stop. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> No, we, this happens a lot. And I'm like, <laughs> um, so yeah, everyone stopped. Marengi, you're doing like the Paladin Power Fist, AKA, please stop moving. Um, give me, so actually Marengi, as you move forward, give me uh, an investigation check. Okay, uh, let me pull up my uh, character sheet real quick. Uh, and we'll do, I don't have any bonus points in investigation, so we'll just see what the, what the die gives me naturally. Yeah. 15, not too shabby. Not too shabby. So, uh, Marengi, I'm going to tell you what you have seen. So, you know, by this point, you've been traveling for a while. You're, you're about five, 10 miles away from the mine. And as you come around this ridge, Don John has come up behind you and he's like, huh? Well, that's something you don't see every day. And uh, the party comes across the bodies of six dead orcs in the road. Interesting. How long have they been? Uh, oh, I was going to say, can I investigate further? See if there's uh, any clues as to why they're there? Uh, yes. If anyone wants to investigate the orc bodies closer, I need a medicine check. And I will tell you what you have to beat. Uh, I have plus three to medicine, so maybe uh, Marengi should, uh, should. I got a natural to... twenty twenty-three. Okay, so Shannon or Barb has investigated, but everyone, anyone who wants to actively go and check out these bodies can do so. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Arcana's rolled a ten. Okay, so you did so not medicine. 
Yes, medicine. So Archon, you did not make the medicine check. You had to beat a 12. 15 plus 3 gives me 18 on my roll, on my medicine okay. roll. I roll the 3. Wow, you you aren't even sure what you're looking at. <laughs> <laughs> you just know that there's some some bodies in the road. You may not even know what orcs are at this point. Oh boy. I mean, it's not a total fail, but you're you're just like, oh, there's people get things in the road. Um, so both Shannon uh, and Marengi and and Archon, what'd you get again? Uh, ten. Okay, so you you didn't fail it, but you were close. So Don John, and I really should roll for Don John, but for sake of story, we're going to say he makes it. I just want to see how well he makes it. He actually does pretty good. I rolled a 19. Um, so all, all three of you are, are checking out these orc bodies. You're, you're noticing and you realize that they're in armor. They had great axes and javelins, but those are like scattered around the ground. They're not, it's not like they died holding these, these weapons. And you, one of you, uh, Barb, you realize that the orcs are still very cold to the touch, which isn't normal because you also can tell, you know, you're, you've been in combat, you know, when you've come across dead bodies of your enemies, they've been dead for about three days, but they're still very, very cold. Hmm. Like unnaturally cold? Yes, because a body that's out in the sun, there should be decay, it should smell, but they, it's like it's like someone pulled them out of an avalanche and they'd never defrost it. Hmm. What could do something like this? Um, Don John, you know, he glances at you, he looks around, he's like, it's the dragon. The dragon did this. Is it an ice dragon? It's a white dragon. Sometimes they use ice, yeah. I, uh, Marengi steps up to the uh, frost-bitten, frost-covered orcs that have been dead for the, in the snow or whatever it is for the last three days and says, looks like somebody put these orcs on ice. And then, the, and then you know, the CSI type music would kick in and it would be pretty, pretty awesome. Oh my. You hear the biggest, longest, massive groan from behind you from Archon. Like, really? Really? Wow. <laughs> wow. Someone put sunglasses Ooh. on. Someone put sunglasses on one of Gary's emotes. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> um, Don John Raskin. He wants to be impressed, but he won't give you the satisfaction. He just. Now's not the time for frivolity. Although he kind of wants to give you a high five because that's something he would have done if you hadn't done it, actually. I and, agree. Uh, and uh, he just, yeah, it looks like we've got an ice dragon on our hands. Um, this could mean bad business for the mine. It looks like we might have to uh, go look for this dragon sooner than I thought. Oh, How soon? What? How soon? Well, let let's check in at the mine and and see where where people are at. If there's anybody left, if they took out all these orcs, you know, orcs are orcs are pretty hard to to take out. I feel like this 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 um, routine <laughs> escort mission to the mine is escalating quickly. We went from e a, a, a dire wolf, easily bamboozled by beef jerky, to now mm -hmm. the prospect of an ice dragon. This, this, it feels like the things have escalated quickly. Could be. You haven't seen the dragon yet. The dragon is what killed the orcs. You have your party has not encountered the or has not encountered the dragon, but now Don John is really in a hurry to get to the mine and see if anyone's left. Because for all he knows, the same dragon may have taken out everyone at the mine, and he could be getting there to more frozen corpses and no job because there's no one to work the mine and now there's a dragon and the, and the dragon clearly is in the area or was because these dead orcs are right here um the dragon at least was around long enough to kill those orcs right now you have no sign of the dragon it's not any sign of a dragon like a roar anything like that is not present all you know 
um, through everyone's great roles is there's an ice dragon around. These orcs have been there for three days and they are unnaturally cold. Um, Can I search their bodies for uh, anything okay. worthwhile to take? Uh, yes. Yeah, I was going to say, are you going to loot them and take their stuff? So anyone who wants to investigate the orc bodies... Uh, give me a search, and I can tell you if you find anything. I'll take a roll on that. I don't have any plus points to investigation, but I'll still roll. Yeah, uh, how yeah, do we... would that be a search? There how would be... we do search? Oh, oh, is there a, is there a specific thing for search? I rolled investigation. Uh, investigation, then. I thought yeah, search was 11. Motion. Okay, 11. What else? 14. Okay. 15. 15. I got 15. Okay, so um, I keep going to see actually. So Archon and Barb, what you find is a pouch of orcish currency. You know, should you come across some orcs or, or go into an orcish town, you'll, you'll be doing okay. You can afford a couple nights at an inn. Um, and you also find like uh, a couple daggers on one of the orcs. Archon, you find like... You're not sure if they're silver or, or orc forged steel, but they're they're nice daggers where if you wanted you could take them. And Barb, the one that you're investigating has a maul where it's it's sized for an orc, so you could take it, um, but it's going to be a little awkward unless you tie it to Don John's pack animal. What what is the weapon? A maul. So basically, like a big a big hammer. I think we should take that with us. Okay. I like big hammers. Uh, yes. And then, uh, Smooth, what did you get? Uh, I got a 14. Uh, Smooth, the orc that you investigated um, was pretty well off. It probably was one of the leaders of the group. You find, again, a lot of orcish coin, and you find what seems to be a silver covered loot. And at least it looks like silver. Again, orcs, you're not sure if they smith with silver. They might, mm -hmm. they might not. But it, it's pretty. And you're not, it's probably not tuned for, for anyone's hearing other than an orc. But if nothing else, you could probably sell it if you want to take that. And we I have, do want to take it. There's two bards in the group, right? Surely one of them would be interested in a fancy musical instrument. Possibly, but, you know, that, that is Smoop's call. Uh, Archon, do you have any interest in this silver loot? Um, I mean, it's not really, it's not really what I play. I guess we could maybe adapt to that, but I mean, why not? Why playing? not take it? It's no good to this dead orc. We're oh, uh, I yeah, no, more so. I, I'm thinking, yeah, I, I could take it, and uh, just given the situation of being, you know, who I am, if there's ever a situation where. We need me to change my appearance to be orcish and blend in an orcish band and win some sort of orcish battle of the bands. I could very much do it in that very specific scenario. Uh, I, as I always say, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And it might fetch <laughs> a pretty penny regardless, so definitely hold on to that. Yeah. All right. Um, and then Archon, what did you roll again? Oh, I thought I already found stuff. Oh, crap. Uh, you did. I'm sorry. Yep. I'm sorry. You're, you're correct. Uh, Marangi, you rolled a uh, 11. 11. Um, you find a uh, orc that's not as not quite as wealthy, but they <laughs> are... I mean, you rolled an 11. We got to go with the dice roll. I get uh, it. I get it. But they, they do have a nice sword, and, you know, you're, you are tall enough where you could wield a sword if you wanted. Um, it's not like the finest sword you've ever seen. It's probably not even as nice as what you're carrying, but it is another weapon if you want to take it. I mean, so again, out of character, let me ask you, what 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 what's what what would be the why not take it? I mean, is there is what are, what are the pros and cons of? Does it add to my encumbrance? Is there some other reason why? I guess I kind of because right now I'm thinking like, why just leave it there? If I can take it, take it. It's free. Um, you could take it just in case you like in case you get in a fight and your sword breaks or your maul breaks, you've got a weapon. Um, we're not really doing encumbrance because everyone's still learning and adding encumbrance is for me, I've never used encumbrance. It's just obviously you can't run around with a 200 pound travel pack. Right. As, a, as someone who's like maybe like six feet tall, it weighs as much or more than you do. So I'm just asking, is, is there any downside to, not, to, to taking it? 
from what you know, no, there's not a downside. Um, you know, it's it's a perfectly serviceable weapon. And down the road, if you ever take dual wield, or again, you lose your, your main weapon, you've got another one. Or you could just sell it because it's still a decent weapon. Sure. The way the way you said from what you know makes it sound like it's cursed or something. But I'm 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 gonna take it because why not? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the take the risk. Seems like All a right. very low risk. Do I need to add something to my character sheet to, to reflect that I took a sword? Uh, yes, but we can do that later. Okay. Uh, just make a note to yourself that you, everyone make a note of what you, you've you scavenged off of the door or off of the orc bodies. I keep saying door. <laughs> yeah, there's like um, a notes. There's a, the, the, for equipment, I basically, there's like an other possessions and I just kind of made like looted from orcish corpses the following items. Oh yeah, okay. A sword from an orc. Oh, I'm going to put an orcish sword because that sounds better. <laughs> okay, I added that to my character notes. Yes, and we can talk about that either when we kind of wrap up or off stream after we're done. Okay. Um, but, you know, just to, uh, whenever you find stuff in a game, just even if it's like a piece of paper next to you, just write it down because I've picked up stuff. And then later the GM's like, don't you remember you have so-and-so? I was like, no, nope, not at all. So that's a good habit to get into. Even if you can't put in your character sheet, if you're doing things electronically, have a piece of paper next to you, which I'm breaking my own rule. I have no paper that I can write out on my desk. Um, that's what the VOD is for. Do you think I should go back and listen to my own voice? <laughs> I mean, I like, I like that the website here lets you add your own little notes and things. You can do it just right, on, right in the app. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, I can make GM notes that are visible only to me per character, or per campaign. If I want, so like, if I want to note stuff as GM, like, oh, um, Gary mentioned it could be cursed. Maybe I'll put that in my pocket for later. You never Great. know. Talk my own way into trouble there. Random, mm -hmm. random question. I don't know if it's a D and D Beyond thing, but as the GM, do you have access to edit our sheets? Like, if you wanted to say, hey, I added a note to your character sheet to take a look at just for you, could you do that? Um, I believe I can. I've got everyone's character oh. sheets open, so let cool. me okay, let me just... check that. Um, da, 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 elements. I believe as the GM, I can. Yes, yeah, so I can say I could add notes to your backstory. So I, I have Gary's sheet open. Um, I could say easily startled by by things that remind him of his village being wiped out. Now, I'm not sure if that shows up as an overall note or a DM note. So now, under your backstory, it shows up on your character sheet if you want to look at that, Gary. Um, I could add others. So I could add other of um, plans to um, focuses on money. And this, this would be more of a DM note, but I could do it focuses on getting paid <clears throat> but now there could be a dragon got it so yeah so those are all things you can do and it's like you could add allies so if you make a good impression on don john you could add him as an ally and then a link to his, his stats so like if right. he winds up adventuring with you as an npc he would for sake of the game would be an ally um, but you know, the backstory you gave us on first session, you could write all of that in D and D beyond and have that at your fingertips. And then as things change, as you and your character get a feel for playing, get a feel for everything else, you can, um, change it up. Like my characters change a lot over the literal <laughs> two years that we've been playing rivals. Um, so is everyone good? Do we need any more sides or, uh, anything else before we move on? Having so having looted these uh, orc bodies um, and taken from them what you know what can be taken, uh, do we just move? Do we just move on? Do these orcs deserve uh, a decent burial, or do we just just leave them here to uh, let the let, you know let the let them rot in the in the road? Because I, I, I Merengi, fine either way. Um, none of you are orcs unless anyone, and this would be a really specific history or, or knowledge religion role, unless any of you have no orc burial customs or how they treat their dead, you wouldn't really care that much about it, especially because your group is pretty determined to get 
Don John to the mine so you can get paid. You're like, the, the dead orcs and the dragon have thrown a loop in these plans, but your focus right now is to at least get to the mine. So, had, had one of us been an orc, though, there could have been a thing there where they would have said, you know, these are my people. We need to, you know, treat their bodies with respect or something and bury them. Uh, as a DM, I could have done that, yes. Or one of you could have decided that, but that basically would have taken the rest of the day for a group of <laughs> a group of six to do whatever you do with dead orcs. I don't yeah. even know what you do with I mean, dead that's orcs. That's a lot of digging. Yeah, or even if you just kind of pitch them off the side of the road, I don't know, which would be really bad. There probably be some <laughs> orc haunting later, just but chuck them in a ditch. Yeah, let's not let's not throw our orc friends in a ditch. Okay. But back to the story. So, um, so you you know there's an ice dragon about. Um, everyone is pilfered the the orc bodies, and unless you decide to um, like, unless any of you have any pressing need to investigate the orc bodies or look for tracks of the dragon, signs of the dragon, you can move on toward the mine. Yeah, I, I, I think we should head on forward and uh, get Don John up to the mine because if the dragon attacked here, he could have attacked there uh, and we need to get there. And plus, Don John showed a lot of interest in uh, potentially coming with us to find this dragon if, say, he doesn't have a job at the mine anymore. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah. How? Yeah. How would? How would you like if a, if a, if my character wants to essentially since we found a a bunch of dead bodies, like if we wanted to like check the area to see if there's any other signs of an attack or any direction kind of like anything else that would give us clues about the attack, what would we do in that case? Um, you could check the you could check the road. You could go further up the road um, if you want to. Like, let's say maybe you, you pick up one of the orcs' weapons and see it. Like, Barb would probably be best suited for that since she's a fighter. Like, look for like signs of damage. Like, how did like like did this orc fight standing up, sitting down? Is is their maul or javelin broken? Is it just scratched? Um, you can go off in the bushes and look, see if you can track anything. Like, did an orc run off and maybe you find another dead orc off in the bushes that, that tried to run or tried to do anything else? Okay. Um, no. Archon, Archon, her dragon confirmed it is kind of like, oh, great. It's just one more delay. Yeah. Yeah. Meringi's point of view very much here is, look, there's, clear, there's a dragon in the area. We got lucky once with this wolf. We don't have a lot of luck. It's going to run out soon. Let's keep moving. Get to the mine. Get paid. You know, let's 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 you know, let's not waste time. Basically. To be fair, I would still love to see Barb try to bamboozle a dragon one day. I mean, you know, there's a lot of questing left to go. You never know. <laughs> I mean, you barely got to the mine at this point, so yeah. who knows? What you're doing, I mean, this is still day one. <laughs> no, well, technically day two. You have slept. Oh, that's true. Um, day one on the road. So, um, are you all going to look for any other signs of other bodies, anything else for the dragon is, or do you want to, or are you focused on getting to the mine? In the direction of the, in the direction, whatever direction the path leads towards the mine, I do, I, I basically would like to just check that to see if there's any clear signs of more, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm not really sure, like, dragon... But like if there are going to be major signs like things knocked over or clawed marks in the road or whatever just kind of looking ahead of us like is there anything oh and oh right have we moved far enough that we can maybe see the mine from here or is it still a ways away <laughs> um it is um just out of range of vision okay um if you go probably another 60 to 100 feet you'll be able to see the entrance oh so it's really not that far no okay okay then, then yeah, I, I just a general, just a general. Like, is there anything else between us and this mine at this point? No, and you can like be on alert or do an investigation as you go along. So, in about another half hour to forty minutes, um, you all will re actually reach the mine. Okay. And what is it you do? Because um, I do have a description of the mine for you all, and I almost put it in the wrong place. <laughs> um, well, it's it's an actual picture of the mine so so you as the players and you as uh, the viewers can also 
see this. Are you dropping that into your chat, Cypher? Yes, I put it in both chats, and I'm putting it in our chat here in X Zoom. Oh, wow. I almost called it. I almost said X split. Oh my god. I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna um, VIP you, um, Cypher, which will allow you to post links in my chat. Um, it let me post a link actually. Not in, not in mine. Yes, it did. Uh, <laughs> It just says star, star, yeah, star. Yeah, it, it doesn't. It, oh. it, it, it blanks yeah, it out. Yeah, that's the twit. I'm going yeah. to fix that, though. Hold on. Okay, um, let me... I can see the link. That's weird. No like, one else I can, yeah. See, yeah. Yeah, no. everyone else that just shows up as a blank thing. So I'm going to I'm gonna fix that for you right now. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. Those graves on the right side of the mine? Maybe. Okay, if they you try that like, again, if you try to post like that mound. link again, Cypher, you sh it should it should come through now. Mm. They, they do look like mounds, so... Yeah. yeah. There you go, now I got it, thank you. No problem. Uh, yeah, Caroline, tweet them and I'll share them once we're done. Uh, Caroline, the geek, has been getting some great clips as well. Mountain to Mountains Toe Gold Mine. Yes, so as you... Um, so as you arrive... Um, you, you find the entrance. It's, it's kind of hidden behind bushes. So, you know, you saw like the top of the arch as you were coming around the corner and it's in the foot of a mountain, thus the mountain's toe name. And above the, the tunnel that serves as the entrance, there's a wooden plank with the name carved into it in common. And all of you can read common. So, all you should know that you've re reached your destination. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh. What? So we've just arrived at the mine. Correct. You are now at the archway to the mine. So, mm -hmm. do we see anyone? Mm -hmm. Funny you should ask. <laughs> Um, hold on one second, because of course I need this and can't find it. Um, so there are two women there guarding, um, well, they're, they're women, but they also look like rats. And they are guarding the entrance to the cave. I'm sorry, you said they're women, but they also look like rats? So yes, they are were creatures. Interesting. They're were rats. Hmm. I've not. I've never uh, heard of that before. Do we have were a way creatures. that we can identify whether or not they are hostile? Um, you could try to sense motive. C uh, could I sense motive? Sure. What do I? Is that with click? perception or? Yeah. What do you roll for that? Um, there should be sense. I thought sense motive was on. It is not. Uh, then That's... yeah, then do perception. Okay, perception. Perception, it is yeah. A Thirteen. Nineteen. Okay. Damn, Barb. When when this happens, Cipher, do we all roll, and or or is it just those who want to engage in this part? Um, if I say everyone give me a roll, then everyone should. Okay, but if got you, it, got it. you can opt not to engage. You could be like, oh, I wasn't expecting this. I, and, you know, based on how you're playing your character, you could be like, your immediate assumption would be like, oh, they're bad. They're bad. I, yeah, at this point, have they, like, are we close enough? We, we see them. Do they see us? Oh, absolutely. You know, they're they're right there at the front of the mine. So as you approach and you are close enough to read the sign, they absolutely see you. I rolled an 18, by the way. Okay. And I got a 19. Okay, so everyone has at least a 15. I oh. have a 13. <laughs> Investigation, let me... Uh... I have the most piss poor. Nope. Uh, the, bards, <laughs> the bards are out. I have a 12. Wow. So the bards, the bards are f interested in the shiny loot, new loot they picked up. They they don't <laughs> notice these uh, humanoid looking Fair. rats. Uh, they're like, oh, shiny thing. And and you can have a meeting of the bards, whatever that looks like, um, over the shiny thing. Um, so they see you and, you know, they're not they're not particularly hostile. They're used to strange people coming in and out. And, and they do notice Don John, um, who's there. 
and they look at the group of you, and one of them is just like, are, are you the new guy looking at Don John? Um, and before he gets a chance to answer, do you any of you want to jump in? Um, no. So, the, uh, the, so these are sentient rat people. They can they they, they can talk. They're yeah. humanoid. Okay. Yep. Equal opportunity employer at this mine. Yes. <laughs> the D and D EEOC is in effect. I would like to just see basically what uh, Don John, like it, if this is the. If this is his people, the people he's reaction? expecting. Yeah, I'm, 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 I, I, yeah at this point, Marengi's happy to kind of like sit back and see how this plays out. We've done our job. Let's get paid. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> okay, uh, Barbara, what were you saying? What's his? What's Don John's reaction to seeing them there? Um, he's a little surprised, and he's also kind of glad that there's actually people outside. It means the dragon didn't eat them or fr okay. freeze frame them. Um, so he, he moves forward. He's like. Oh, good. We, we we found some dead orcs on the way up. Well, I was worried that maybe that it got to the mine too. Are you are you the uh, are you the captains? Who are who are you? And uh, and one of them kind of looks him over. It's like uh, who are, and the other's like, yeah, yeah. We've been waiting on you. You're the you're the new overseer guy, right? And he, and he nods. And they they look at you. And they the one that previously was kind of quiet. It's like. And, and are they are they working the mine? What are they doing? Do what? I look like someone that works in a mine? I mean, do you, do you really want an answer to that question? <laughs> Not wrong. Not wrong. <laughs> um, so you do ask that? Yes. Okay, Barb, what do you do? I... We're escorts. And so the 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 rat the rat that asked that is like, all right, well, you know, go in. One of our one of our sisters will will take you to the overseer's office and get you all paid and get this one settled. And he said, wait, you said something about a dragon. What do you mean dragon? Who was the one who uh, uh, realized it was a dragon? That was uh, Archon, right? Yeah, but you you all shared the information. Oh, okay. So you, you all investigated the orc bodies, and Don John said, "Oh, it looks like there's an ice dragon." So you know uh, that there's an ice dragon about. Okay. So uh, yeah. Mer uh, so Merengi uh, says to the where uh, people, uh, yeah, a, a little way back down the road there, we encountered some uh, orcs that uh, bore all the marks of having been uh, mutilated by a dragon. Uh, what do you what do you know about it? Because we didn't sign up for we didn't sign up for a dragon. Well, we didn't sign up to guard a mine as were rats either. But here we are. Um, we haven't seen a dragon. We hear it on occasion, but so far it's not bothered us. Those orcs must have attacked it. Mm. All right, that, that, that frankly sounds a little bit fishy to me. Um, the idea that orcs would, you know, would attack a dragon. And frankly, this was just literally just down the road. So I'm a little bit suspicious of your story that you don't know anything about this dragon, that you haven't seen it. Um, you know, it really was like right, right back there. So I'm not entirely sure uh, I'm convinced when you tell me that you don't know anything about this dragon situation. What, also, what happened to the previous uh, person that was in charge of the mine? Well, they kind of look at each other and look at you all. It's like, he had an accident. He kind of fell down a mine shaft. They don't hmm. look remorseful in the least. This, this is starting to smell worse and worse to, to me with each passing moment. I'm not mm -hmm. believing a word that comes out of these rats. Uh, so should we just get paid and uh, focus more on our dragon here, or, or are we interested in potentially sticking around with Don John here and making sure that uh, he's not just, you know, walking right into trouble? I mean, technically, we have done our job, right? The mission was to deliver Don John Raskin to the to the to the mine, which we have now done. So mm -hmm. at this point, yeah, I'd like to see some money. 
All right, so are all of you now demand? And so before you, so just to note, before you can actually get paid, they need to, like, there's a where rat, there's another where rat waiting to take you to the overseer's office. Oh, okay. They're not going to like just. They're not going to be so gauche as to be like, "Here's your gold," unless you really piss off Don John. He's starting to like you. Okay. So, I, out of character, breaking fourth wall GM tip: an NPC can be a lot of help, or they can be a hindrance. And for right now, Don John is warming up to you all again, and even you. And you could ask to get paid. You could ask to get paid right there, and he's going to refuse. It's because he has to like get to his office, get unpacked. I mean, he's got the gold on him. He's not going to stiff you. But just saying, there could be other opportunities here. If you, unless you just really, really want to get that gold and go. Let's stick with this guy. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, to go with whatever the consensus view is. I'm happy to get paid. But if others in the group want to uh, play, the, you know, see if there's any other opportunities here or whatever, then you know, I'll, I'll go with whatever the group decides. I think we should go in and make sure he gets there safely. That this isn't some that hasn't been taken over by some kind of hostile group. We'll it's true. It could job. be an ambush. Right. This could and be a setup. Dead orc bodies on the road. No dead bodies that any. No half frozen dead bodies that any of us can see here. Let's at least right. get this person installed, and then we can get paid. All right. Yep. All right. So uh, Don John waves them off. He, he's tired, and he's he's wondering what has he got himself into if the previous overseer had an accident. Um, and the other where rat greets you. She's quiet. She's doing her job, and leads you down some tunnels. And there's there's a nice office, nicer than you'd expect someone in a mind to have. Honestly, it's like the dude who got hired as someone's. Buddy gets the nice corner office, but he doesn't really deserve that corner office. Nice. Um, he, he drops his bags, and you hear you can hear the jingle of coins. And it's not just the coins you took off the orcs. And uh, he leans back in his chair, puts his feet up on the desk. He's like, "All right, you got me here, and and I'm gonna pay you. I'm not stiffing you. You got me here in one piece. You you, you scared the the dire rat away. I'm not gonna stiff you. However, however." I don't trust these were rats because I was supposed to talk to my my uh, the person I'm replacing. We were supposed to kind of have that handoff. They were going to show me around the mine. I was going to meet people. This was going to be, you know, a little more up and up. And suddenly we find out that he's had an accident. I, I don't trust it. And you you lot are capable. So let me let me make you an offer. And you don't have to take it. Just listen. And he, he like tips his hat back, does the cowboy thing of help me make sure that I too do not fall into a mine shaft, but also that dragon's going to be a problem. It's going to be an issue. I'd rather not have an issue at this mine. Well, besides the one I'm going to make as the overseer. And there's a lot more gold in it. You heard the clink when I dropped my bags. I mean, I, I agree with uh with you don john i think something definitely smells very fishy here um these rats i don't think they're telling the truth no, none of this adds up when they said accident i could i could see the air quotes like right as they said it it all sounded very fishy to me um and yeah i mean we, we, we've come this far if you've got more gold in those uh, very deep pockets we'll happily uh sniff around a little bit and uh and see what we can do as long as you know we'll be well paid at the end of it um, he kind of chews on his toothpick for a second. He's like, all right, you said you're into it. What about the rest of you? You know, unless he speaks for you, in which case I kind of worry about your group. <laughs> no, I, I speak only for myself. The others should, should chime in. I'm more interested in what Barb has to say because Barb seems to be good at leading us into the right direction. <laughs> Are you asking us to protect you from the rats and kill the dragon? Yeah. Archon, what do you think? Oh, I didn't look. Yeah, I didn't like Barb. With, I, I thought Barb had a thought. Wait. Why don't we take it one step at a time? <laughs> well, we're going to investigate what's going on here in your mind. We'll ask around about the dragon and we'll see if that's something that we're willing to do. But one problem at a time. I like, I, like, I like Bob's attitude. And uh, we were only asked to escort you and seat you 
in your new position for a particular posted price. There was nothing mentioned in this task about investigating, uh, maintaining your job, seeing about that. I really feel like if, if we're going to do a little bit of this extra work for you, just to make sure that you're safe and installed in this position, it might be worth a little bit or perhaps significantly more than we're currently getting. Yeah, oh, we should also get paid first. He, he just laughs. He, he, he gives uh, Archon a knowing smile. He, he's like, I, I like you. You're, you do you do business well. I like you. So uh, he go he like reaches um, and pulls out his, his belt pouch, um, and he he drops a pouch on the desk. It's a very heavy thud, because you uh, bamboozled off the the dire wolf and protected him, and you you showed that you are not just crafty, but you all are smart in how you deal with things. He's doubled your payment. There's a 200 gold, there are 200 gold pieces in this pouch um, to be split evenly among you. Or because I'm in, in not a benevolent DM all the time, I could say Barb gets more because of her bamboozling of the dire wolf. I mean, I, 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 it's hard to argue with, frankly. She's the only one who's really done anything of, of, of any great value. And, or, 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 you know, the rest of us, to some degree, have really just been kind of setting us back. Bob is the only one who's actually Not done anything useful. of great value. I just got our salary doubled. I, 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 I kind of felt like Don John was already going in that direction. Like he was saying, hey, I've got these deep pockets. I feel like he was already to pony up, already ready to pony up the cash. But I'm, I'm very glad that we're at this point. Yeah, gold is gold. I'm happy to still split it evenly. Oh, yeah. what a team player! We, if mm. we're gonna if we're gonna keep going together, it's not time to start pulling rank. And at this point, we may not get out of this alive anyway, so we can definitely divvy it up later. <laughs> we right. can talk about it when it's over. Right. All right. So, um, so you know, you all take your. You, so you now have fifty gold each. You're doing very well. Please add that to your character sheet. Um, so he's like, you know, we we traveled all day. I've got quarters here. Uh, one of the stewards can show you to quarters, and I know, I know it's a mine, but people live here as well as work here. You're not going to be in like some. And he was about to say rat hole, and then he caught himself as he looked toward the steward, who's a were rat. He's like, it's 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 lovely accommodation. <laughs> he caught himself because he would have got a glare. He would have got such a glare if he'd said it, it's not a rat hole. Um, it's like, yeah. Um, dinner and bells in a, in a couple hours from what I've been told we'll meet in the in the hall it's it's up on this level we don't have to go super down in the mines and uh, first thing in the morning we'll make a plan on on how we're going to deal with this we can meet for breakfast and then come back to the office how does that sound sounds good yeah, yeah I'll work with that all right, and uh, that is where we're going to end this scenario of Dungeon Crossing. You have now been hired by Don John Raskin to do more than simply escort him to a mine. All right, I like it. That's good to me. More intrigue awaits. Who could have foreseen this coming? I know. I thought it was going to be a simple, you know, uh, escort uh, quest. And now look at this. We're investigating uh, suspicious rats, possibility of a dragon. Just More to think, money? Merengue almost got killed by this guy. I was honestly expecting us to go into this with Merengue getting killed and the rest of us trying to figure out, you know, where we we're going to find another <laughs> paladin. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm glad we got past those initial uh, teething troubles. Merengue much more of a team player now. I'm, I'm fully invested in uh, making some more money. Um, true. OK, so we've got about 20 or not quite 20. We've got about 15 minutes left. Um, so we did waste, we did lose time this morning um, because of the the audio issue. So what I want to do, and, and this is something we do actually on uh, Rivals of Waterdeep, is if in either chat, and actually no, I'm not going to restrict it to in character questions. So if people have questions for for you all as the players or your characters, um, if they do question, and then say if it's either for your character or for you as a player. Um, ask us a few questions before we wrap for today. Cool. And so, so people, so you mean like, like, like people in the chat right now can just ask questions? Correct. Cool. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on both chats so I can do our best to paste questions yeah, into the Zoom chat. I've got mine. ASA. Right um, ask us questions. Yes. 
Adam's got his question answering hat on. You look like a Keebler elf. <laughs> I don't know what's I don't know what's I, going on with that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, no questions. There's no questions. I ha I have a question, but it's just a it's just a bunch of oh um uh oh we have a question from Tanya's chat for Don John. Is there a significant other? Um, there could be. Um, and shall we say that you know, assuming or if Brian is okay with it, Don John really does like the uh, the cut of Archon's jib. If not, if Brian's not into it, then that can go nowhere. I, I have a <laughs> question from my chat. Leah D asks, uh, did you feel the session today advanced your character in any way? And is that hmm. um, is that to anyone or everyone? I think, I think yeah, so I think that's uh, I mm -hmm. think that's for anyone in the group to uh, respond to if they want. Gary, you should have a response to that. I th I feel like Merengue's grown up a little bit from his, from the first session where he really was you know frankly a liability both to the group in game group and you know the real life enterprise of this entire show because he was so because he was such a troublemaker. Um, but yeah, I think I think Luigi. I, sorry, there's Luigi's mansion over here in another window. I said Luigi. Uh, there's Merengue. <laughs> Merengue has grown up a lot. I think he's more of a team player now. Um, uh, you know, I, I I got a sword off of a dead orc. That's something. So yeah, I made this you know, little incremental pro progressions. I'm pretty happy. Yes. Um, mm. We're so what we're doing is we're taking questions from both chats and putting them in our chat in Zoom. Mm. Oh, um, cool. Okay. So, yeah, which one? Uh, okay, wants to so. Next question for um, Oh, question in character for Smoop. Had Barb not stopped you from using the frying pan and serious damage had been done, then what would you have done? Uh, well, it, I wasn't aware uh, going forward that uh, the pan could potentially do serious damage. Uh, so I was more so thinking in cartoonish terms, but uh, I suppose I would have had to deal with the consequences of probably getting my ass kicked uh, by literally everyone else being stronger and having more HP than me. I, I am curious, uh, Cypher, had, had Bob not stepped in and had uh, Smoop tried to bean Merengue with a frying pan, Mm -hmm. um, would would the storytelling just have taken care of that, or would that would that actually have initiated uh, an intra party combat encounter? Um, for the, for the sake of moving the story forward, and also for character and player growth, um, what I'd planned if this had happened um, was for Swoop to hit you, but not make it lethal. Right. And what would have happened is either you would have taken that as a salutary lesson as learn to tr like learning to trust people again and working with them and or you would have been unconscious and the next day you would have had to catch up with the group because you would have uh, been unconscious and not come around before they left especially if they all got up early and had breakfast as you all did anyway you would have come around like later in the morning and the innkeeper would have told you oh they headed toward the mine here's how you get there i i wouldn't have killed a a a new character and i don't for me as a dm i don't see a value in killing a character as a lesson unless you had let's say you had not changed anything between two sessions and you've been like no i'm gonna play him as it is this is this is what i'm doing then i've been like so Marengi would have to die <laughs> and that would be a, this would be a, and thus there are consequences. And you and I would have had a, depending on how one of us took it, uh, and probably an unpleasant conversation about how to play well with others. But, uh, I'm very happy to say that Gary initiated a conversation with me after the first session. And we talked about it and talked it out and, and why the collaborative part of the storytelling is important and why the character as introduced would not work. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I'm. I'm glad that I've tweaked my my approach to role playing 
the character for the frying pan incident i just imagined that i would have been like bonked on the head in kind of like a you know in a comedy kind of way and would, would have just been taken out of the picture until the next morning you know when i woke up with a sore head so i couldn't have continued to aggravate players who were trying to make a deal with don john okay oh we got a lot of questions oh, did we lose yeah someone? we have i'm i'm gonna if um I'm, I'm gonna say depending on how much time we have and what we might oh no Oh no! What happened? So, we somebody oh, somebody just somebody... dropped connection, but I don't know who. Oh, I don't know who it was. Um, Someone but switched. If, if everyone okay? If everyone's okay in the Zoom chat, oh. then we're good. Um, I'm. I wanted to just to pop in to say Press we have a lot died. of. Sorry. We have okay. we have a lot of questions. <laughs> I have them all, but I wanted to ask um, Tanya and Gary if there were any if there was any behind the curtain conversation you wanted to have because there are a lot of questions coming in. So if we wanted to like maybe table some questions first. Um, and, and yeah. move on to it, chatting amongst ourselves because there are a lot. I think of we can do like whatever, whatever <laughs> kind of like you know, post whatever kind of behind the scenes post mortem we want to do. I'm happy to kind of do that off stream. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're all, we've all been kicked out. We're all back at the airport. My switch died. <laughs> oh, what no. happened? Oh, no. Did your battery run out or something? Yeah, it wasn't plugged in, so I could I could stand it up on the on my desk okay. here. Well, I mean, we're out. I mean, the 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 game portion is over, so I think doesn't. Uh, yeah, Cipher has a nice bench over here. I'm gonna go sit on yeah. the bench. Yeah, and the bug off is happening if you want to go chase bugs. Um, and there's the sunfish. We are working uh, on an order of the sunfish uh, emblem, a logo. Oh, my so God. There it is. There it is. So, um, so just um, a quick thing. We probably won't get to all of these before because technically we're supposed to be done at three my time. Um, I did make a Twitter account, so we could actually reply to these on Twitter. Or um, if you're in Gary's Discord, he made a dungeon crossing channel. Yeah. So you can those in there or drop them in an email and answer them okay. from that account. But let's take a couple and then um, before we wrap, we have some yeah. in question care. We have some um, in question character. Sorry, in character questions, and we have some um, like anyone could pick one up. We have some specifically. Um, I actually. So yeah, I think all of them are in there. Cipher, also, me... do you want to drop the link to the Dungeon Crossing Twitter account into the chats sure. as well? Sure. So that people can follow. All right, I'm going to let you all pick the questions you answer. I have a question for Shannon from. Uh... <laughs> no, let's take let's take chat mm -hmm. questions because there's a lot. This, this is this is from the chat. Okay. <laughs> um, Sammy Alia asks Shannon, "I love Bob so much. What about a barbarian? Made you want to play one?" Well, I don't I don't really know much about D and D at all. So um, you know. Tanya was pretty helpful at the beginning and said, you know, no magic. Um, so I just asked around, I talked to some friends and talked, I told them, you know, what the restrictions kind of were. And, and a couple people suggested that I should try barbarian because you can fight and that's fun. And that sounded good to me. And then I was like, Barbara, the barbarian It's just, I couldn't let it go. Yeah. It fits. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah um, um, uh, Adam pick one uh, <laughs> for everyone oh hang on sorry for everyone have your characters impressions of their party members changed after this session god I hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I Mer felt like we were a good team this time yeah, um, much better. Merengue came into this second episode knowing that he was in a very deep hole in terms of, you know, first impressions. And I, ho I hope I've, I've, I've corrected that somewhat. I, I, I definitely think, yeah, we are. And I think this is of any, of any characters when you sit down, if you haven't really talked about the adventure, talked about anything ahead of time, and a lot of us are building these things from scratch, you really find your groove as you're playing like the the story sort of writes itself and the reasons that you work together sort of write themselves so yeah i feel like we're we're definitely becoming closer to that well-oiled machine yeah uh, let's take a couple more and then we will actually answer these on the new uh twitter account for the show um i oh, i just love this um for 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 Shannon and or Tanya, will Barb take on some kind of role played in character title for bamboozling the dire wolf? Uh, I mean, like, you mean like Bob the bamboozler or something? 
I kind of, I leave that up to Barb as to how she wants to basically make sure when people see Barb, they know, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Barb boob. Booth, Boothler. We'll, we'll see if it uh, if it was a one off or if it <laughs> or if it you know if I'm successful at it later. And yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean it could be a one off, or you could really lean into it and have bamboozling be like your whole. That, that's how you're known throughout it, well, the depends realm. Depends on how the dice roll, right? Yeah, Archon is already starting. Archon is starting to write a story about it already. Like there, there will be a song <laughs> the next time we the next town we hit. Oh, you don't know Barb? Oh, let me tell you about Barb. <laughs> <laughs> let me sing you a ballad of bamboozling. <laughs> Yeah, there'll be a lot of bamboozling. Some oh, folks wow. want to know uh, Smoop and Archon's Bardic Colleges. Um, uh, I chose... Oh, crap. I chose Lore for mine. Um, yes, Bard College, College of Lore. I looked at the more basic ones, and that mm -hmm. one that one seemed to work. The, some of the newer ones, written ones, looked interesting. Um, but I, I'm still keeping this one fairly simple. So that worked. Uh, I went with the College of Glamour. Uh, <laughs> is, is that I, a real I'm not 100%. It is. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure why. I just thought it would be more beneficial towards uh, the ability to change into other forms and disguise as things to deceive people. That's brilliant. Uh, let me see what I got here. And while you all are answering questions, I'm going to put all these into Google Docs so we don't lose them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am, I'm doing my best to copy and paste. <laughs> uh, here's an in-character question from Gijit. How is Archon feeling about doing more work with this group? He seems to have reservations. Oh, Archon always has the best reservations. There's like, what, party of four? Yeah, we're good. Um... <laughs> It, it's oh my God. it is um it is really about the money i haven't given him a super super like in detailed backstory but i'm going to try to give him one that is without um without pain and trauma and see if that works so the happy go lucky isn't just a a face but um yeah no the 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 group I feel like always comes together this way, and it's like, all right, yeah, we we always basically butt our heads against one another. But whenever money is brought up, we're all like, oh yeah, wait, money, yeah. So yeah, I think Archon is definitely, he's like, yeah, this is this is just how we do, you know. We have a level-headed one. We have we have a a jokester. We have somebody who can maybe be set off, and and then we have somebody who just kind of groans a lot and rolls his eyes. It's funny you mentioned the the dark backstory. When I first jumped into that very melodramatic, uh, overwrought backstory that Marenghi had, I, I noticed that there's a comment in the chat last week where somebody said, "Oh yes, I remember when I when I first started playing D and D and rolled my first character, dark twisted backstory." And I kind of felt like, oh, that was like, I guess that's like a rookie move. I I think I don't know. In my experience, from what I've seen um, more lately, is that I think there is just kind of. And not just in D and D, but like especially also in video games, there's just this trope of having some kind of horrific something in the protagonist's story that motivates them. It is very tropey. And I thought, um, and a, a friend of ours who um, who works with Take This, um, Doctor B, had a tweet about I'm building my character without like he he still talks to his parents and he had a very nice upbringing and everything <laughs> is just okay. And I'm like, yeah, that would actually be fine because then you have a little more freedom to write your backstories. And, you know, maybe your backstories have like a lost friend in them who didn't necessarily die right. or, you know, things like that. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a trope in a lot of, in a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, Re arenas where it's like yeah something really 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 horrible happened to you and set you on this path and i was like well why don't we take all the horrible stuff out and see if that also works yeah and i mean as long as i've been playing my character still has the backstory of her wife was murdered in front of her so good job me <laughs> <laughs> i've been playing this game a long ass time and i still fell in that trap do you think <laughs> I, I, so i have a, so i have a question in that regard um for the more experienced people here like like cypher when you create a character and you do a backstory i guess I, I guess it's a question of preference but like do you prefer to or do you find more players like to come in with a fully baked well thought out backstory or do they kind of improvise it and discover it as they go um i think some people depending on like how they 
how they look at the game. Um, some people have an idea and then mold it as they play with a group because so many things can change and shift as you find your groove with a group with a with a set group if it's an ongoing thing. Some people are very set in, I'm gonna play a game set in Avernus, which is the DD version of Hell. This is how my character wound up in hell. End of, they're never going to change. They're never going to learn. And that's just, that's also just boring. That's like talking to someone real life who is just convinced they're right no matter what. And no matter what you tell them, no matter how many facts you give them, they don't change their name or change their mind. So it's just like, why would I talk to you? Why would I venture with you if you're just going to be an obstinate jackass the whole time? Right. I feel personally attached. Wow. <laughs> I, I, um, I, wow. I, I want to ask this one because I really, I really enjoy this and seeing how it plays out as we're, as we're doing this, but a question for Tanya, uh, what can you do to help your players act out the situations and get into character? Oh boy. Um, I like ask, <laughs> sorry. It's just, it's one of the things where it's like, I know what I, I know what I'm thinking. It's hard to put words to it. Um, for things like I could make someone roll and, you know, it would, a, it would be very boring and not engaging to make someone roll for literally everything they want to do. So there's a chance a, to give people a chance to kind of get out of their shell if they want and go, okay, the, you like, like Barb and, and the dire wolf, you find the dire wolf, anyone else, anyone could decide it. Oh, it's a dire wolf. I know dire wolves are bad. I'm going to attack it and then we would have had combat versus let's say maybe Archon and Smoop have a friendly battle of the bards and I can say okay give me performance checks you won you didn't that's boring but if I say hey what leads you to even have this battle of the bards are you bored at camp one night are you waiting on someone to come down for breakfast are you just like ha I'm a better bard than you I don't care what you say. And then Smoop's like, no, I'm the better guard. I'll prove it. And then that's a chance to kind of act it out. So giving people a reason to, to act out things versus just, okay, roll for it. One of you won, one of you didn't, and then move on. Because it doesn't give a chance for anyone to get, A, get out of their shell if, if they are a quieter player, but also not a chance to really immerse themselves in the story. Because at the end of the day, and I'm going to say this probably every episode we do this, we're telling a collaborative story. It's not just me going, here's the thing, go do it. You all are making decisions and changing the course of, of what the pre-written adventure is because we've already deviated from the pre-written adventure at this point. And that's not a bad thing. And that's how homebrews happen. So it's, it's knowing, and it's also, this is why watching each other is so much better because I can get a visual cue. Like if someone either looks bored, maybe they're fidgeting, or maybe it's like, oh God, we've been playing for two hours. Everyone needs a bio break. Um, something like that. So that's why being able to see each other, whether or not you're physically at a table or in this case, virtually at a table, it works out a lot better. By the way, that bard off definitely has to happen at some point before <laughs> this quest is over. Uh, Cypher, I'm curious. You said we've deviated from the like the written quest line. How mm -hmm. how how is that happening? Because like we're at the mine, aren't we? Where we're supposed basically supposed to be right now? You're at the mine. Yes. That. So here's, <laughs> I'm not going to give. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna... I know her too well, and that like okay. <laughs> So here's the thing. One, there are some things where I could say I could answer that question. But then I'm a going to give away the conceit of the of the story. And, oh no, and, I don't want any spoilers. Um, well, I mean, there's ways to answer that without giving away spoilers. Um, so yes, if you if you look at it very linearly and go, we got Don John Raskin from the inn point A to the mine point B. Yes, you have done that. But the adventure is not <laughs> simply that because it would be like five pages long and boring. So there's more to it once you get to the mine. The thing with the orcs is as written. The thing with the dire wolf and you finding that coming out of a bush, I threw that at you because you got a high, because Shannon got a really high roll. Okay. There are no dire wolves in this adventure. Okay. So it's always there up to are now. Um, there are uh -huh. now. So when you come back, you might find a dire wolf that's like super excited to see you and hopes you have more jerky. You <gasps> Oh, tell me we can have a dire wolf pet for the party. Oh, yes. Let's oh, tame it. please. You gotta tame it. Okay, the party has to learn to get along better, and I'll think about getting you a puppy. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Ryan's never going to talk to me again. He's going to be like, fuck <laughs> this game. No, I'll, I'll get off it. We'll be done with the game. Everyone's blocked me on Twitter. I hate you. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, let's uh, let's do one more audience question, then we'll call it, because also, I am hungry. Same. I like y'all, but I'm what hungry. Have we, what have we not? Oh, uh, Gary. Yeah. Um, in question, for Marengi, is there a sensibility that heightens your offense? AKA, what is your dark place? I mean, I am trying to back off from the very over overblown version of Merengue that I brought in in the first week where he was like so dark and misanthropic. It was almost, I don't know, comical, but like not in a good way. Um, I'm kind of reevaluating who Merengue is. He's definitely got a dark backstory, but the, the part of it that I really want to accentuate is that deep down he believes that he hasn't completely lost faith. Like he acts like he has, and for the most part he has. But he, but it's not like the, the like there's still like the flickering embers of like he still wants to believe he just doesn't have a reason to, and and I feel like hopefully this quest will there'll, there'll be some opportunity for him to uh, redeem himself because that's what we all want that's what makes a good character arc. Uh, but yeah, he's pretty he's very moody, very grumpy, and and is and is and is in a dark place pretty much most of the time. And as you saw during the quest today, like any any sense that like something might jump off or. Um, like he's constantly very alert and on his guard, just like waiting for someone to like turn on him or, um, and so he comes across as very, very guarded and very, um, you know, like, uh, just, just re you know, ready to spring into action at any, at any moment. So he's, he's, he's a little bit, um, uh, high strung, a little bit moody, but there's, there is, there is still a good guy under un under underneath there somewhere. We just got to see if this story can bring you out of him. Yes. Yeah, so we got to like prod you until the gooey center. Uh, there's a gooey center trust me it's in there it's way <laughs> so down deep you're a marshmallow we'll, we'll get through so you've been held in the fire too long and we got to crack through the shell to get to the gooey right center. yeah he's all burned and yeah that's a good metaphor he's all like burned and, and gross on the outside but there's still like a good edible part like way underneath <laughs> some people like their marshmallows that way they like torture them until they're completely black and that doesn't work for me yeah um so we've saved all of your questions both from gary's chat and my chat and what we're going to do is um, I've saved them in Google Doc. We'll try to answer them from the show's new Twitter account. Um, and maybe we'll retweet them from our own accounts. But yes, uh, we created an account. Everyone's going to have access to log into it. So if you want to ask us stuff in question, that'd be fine. Um, and with that, I think we're going to wrap up and figure out when we're going to play again. Uh, just heads up. I've got Gen Con stuff the next Saturday. So August 1st, I'll actually be doing a lot of Gen Con. So we won't play August 1st. If all goes well, probably August 8th, if, okay. if everyone's schedule works out. All right. Um, okay. But I had to find out. So the thing I'm doing that's not yet announced may conflict with August 8th. So we've got to figure it out. Um, so, yeah. So starting with my view, uh, Brian, who are you? What do you do? Where can we find you? Also, when did you get that lovely check mark next to your name, sir? Um, well, <laughs> hi. I am Urban Bohemian Brian Gray, newly minted twitch partner and um i basically usually stream variety games um some cooking some drinking content um you know uh, the drinking content's a little bit less but usually just games uh, a lot of visual novels lately um i will be streaming um tomorrow morning uh per my usual and tuesdays saturdays and sundays are my usual day um which frees me up to do um to do fun stuff like this so i can't wait to figure out when we're going to do this again yeah yeah what are you playing right now <laughs> uh, Brian, what I, oh let's see uh this morning was some destiny and then previously if everyone everyone i don't know if anybody bought a bunch of games over the summer um because of the efforts for racial justice there were a lot of bundles that were being given so there's a lot of independent games i got a bundle of like over 1700 independent games oh is that that uh, itch package because that was crazy yeah that itch package so I am trying to kind of pick and choose like, oh, that looks interesting. Let's play that for an hour and let's play this for an hour. And we found some really fun stuff. Otherwise, visual novels. So it's very popular. Dream Daddy and okay. uh, Arcade Spirits. Oh, yeah, playing yeah. Those. So, yeah, everyone's loving those, too. So have yeah. you tried later datas? I have not, but I actually have it. And I would to be love really to get fun. to it. Yeah, it's like Dream Daddy, <laughs> but like in a senior's nursing home. And it's like Which finding I think love like in the later so years cool. of your life. Yeah, it's really cute. So, we yeah, I would love packs. to. Yeah, I got to try that out. <laughs> uh shannon you're next uh i predominantly am an actor uh i've been on a lot of tv shows like raising hope westworld the riches um 
those are my like long-term shows. And then uh, I'm recently, I was in The Last of Us 2. If you haven't played, play that. Um, and uh, I'm going to start uh, streaming probably within a week. So you can follow me there if you want to uh, watch that. It's uh, my handle Shannon is live. Just drop Yay. that link into the chat for you. Thanks. Hey. Uh, Adam, what are you doing? Who are you? What do you do? Uh, I am Adam Nickerson. I am not doing much. Uh, I work with Gary on Animal Talking. And uh, otherwise, I am a game developer, make small games uh, like Ding Dong XL and uh, Bit Blaster. And you can find me on Twitter at Nickervision. Awesome. And Gary, what are you up to? Well, who's next on Animal Talking? What, do you, what else are you doing? Uh, we had a great show this week on Animal Talking. Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash gwitter, which is where we archive all of our episodes. Please go give us a sub. Uh, we had a terrific episode this week. Brie Larson, of course, Captain Marvel herself was on the show. Uh, Dr. Lupo, one of the biggest uh, streamers on the Twitch platform, joined us. Uh, Frisk, another terrific uh, streamer, uh, was uh, with us. And uh, music from Kenny Fong. We had a really, really fun show. Um, and next week we have uh, Rick and Morty creator uh, Justin Roiland, uh, a New York Times bestselling author uh, Susan Orlean. And uh, I know, it's, I, I can't believe we got her. It's hilarious. It's, she's going to be great. And uh, music uh, from the Elwins, a very cool uh, Canadian indie rock band whose music is uh, really, really cool. And I look forward to having them uh, on the show. We're going to have all four of them. They all play Animal Crossing. We've got all four of their characters on, on the set. Uh, playing the nice. drums and the and, and, and the keyboards. It's going to be really fun. Um, you can also find me over on Kind of Funny. I co-host uh, kind, of, kind of Funny Games Daily uh, almost every Wednesday with Greg Miller. And we just have a new uh, podcast and YouTube show, the Kind of Funny X-Cast, myself, Snowbike Mike, and Alana Pierce um, uh, talking about all things Xbox as the next Xbox generation gears up uh, to release. So um, uh, twitch.tv slash Gary Witter, Twitter, uh, Gary Witter and youtube.com G Witter is where you'll find me. Awesome. And uh, I've been your DM, Tanya. And um, Let's have a round of applause for Tanya, by the way. What a great DM. Just thank. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, I've been praised. Goodbye. Smoke bomb. <laughs> that's that's, her, that's <laughs> everyone's weakness. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you, you can find us here on Saturdays once you figure out our schedule and everyone's keen to do it. Um, also, thanks to DD Beyond for giving us uh, codes to give away. Oh, uh, right. So Gary, I don't know if you want to hold yours till the next one or do, give it, do a giveaway in your Discord. But uh, thanks to D&D Beyond for giving us codes to give away during Dungeon Crossing. Uh, it's Saturday, so tomorrow morning uh, over at twitch.tv backslash D&D. You can find me on Rivals of Waterdeep. We are an official actual play show on the D&D Twitch channel. We are the, also the only show that is all black and people of color. And we are in our seventh season. So that is episode six of season seven. That will happen tomorrow. In the evening, I am in a game run by my friend Diana and his Greek mythology called Aegon. That's over at Bard and Barbarian. And, um, and then on Thursdays, you can find me over at Wandering DM, DMing a campaign of Dragon Age. And uh, our search for Anders continues. Fenris is the Inquisitor. And we've had a roster change up because uh, Wandering DM is playing a new character and one of our previous players had to take a paying gig. So Gabe James Games has joined our cast as an elven blood mage. So it's a whole lot of shenanigans. <laughs> uh, so uh, Thirsty Thursday is the hashtag for that show. So yeah, that is what's going on. And once we know our next date, we'll definitely promote it. Uh, Gary and I will both put these on YouTube. And uh, I think I'm gonna raid Pleasantly Twisted, who also got partnered yesterday. Oh, we have to raid someone, of course. Let's go find yes. who can... Do you wanna do a double? Who, who do you wanna raid? We could do a double. Um, pleasantly twisted. I'm gonna put it in your chat. She also got rate got partnered yesterday, and she's playing Final Fantasy VII remake. Um, let me make sure she's on, because she should be. She's on uh, your time zone, Brian. Mm -hmm. So, and she went live shortly before we did. So, I, let me just make sure she's actually still on, because that is the day we would switch. So, I'm gonna put up the ending screen. Um, I've got everyone's info there, so you can follow folks on Twitter. Um, and if the credits want to act right, I could actually roll credits. 
We don't know. Oh, you've got credits? Yes, that is in Streamlabs. There is um, a credits widget. Oh, I had yeah, no we idea. Can, <clears throat> we can like put our heads together and maybe and I don't really need Adam. Class up these joints. Yes, yeah, so you can roll it live, <laughs> or you can put it in your stream deck. <laughs> um, so there you go. On my stream, you will see the end screen and credits. And pleasantly twisted is still live. So let's do a joint raid over to our our friend pleasantly twisted, who is playing the remake of Final Fantasy VII. I'm ready to um, go. All right, I started the raid. Oh, I wrote raised. I did not write raid. Good God. <laughs> oh. Um, that shows how tired I am. I wrote entirely the wrong word. Uh, pleasantly Twisted. Um, she also works for Tiltify, does a lot of amazing charity streaming, does a lot of Souls, Dark dark Souls, Soulsborn, Sekiro type games, and is real strategic. And watching her is way more fun than watching other people. So uh, what is our raid call? Is it a is it a done? Oh, never mind. Dalspiff has it. Um, Cipher raid and hi if you're in my chat and a subscriber if you're in Gary's chat. Uh, what is your raid call? We usually just uh, post uh, emotes of uh, our dog Luna. There she is. Oh, excellent! A little little fluffy face. We just kind of spam Aww. that. Um, all right, I'm about ready to raid. I got 174 people ready to go. Thank you. So I hope I hope everyone uh, playing today, all all five of us, uh, enjoyed this. I I really am enjoying it. Um, and thank you to everyone who came by and watched. Yes. All right. On three, two, one, raid. Here we go. See you later. All right. See you on the other side. Bye, everyone. Bye.